What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am and welcome to day seven of the 12 days of Scrubs. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic holiday time today. I think you guys are really gonna like uh, what I got for you. It's all the like insane school teacher wild principal stories from the year should be a pretty good one. So uh, if you're hyped for it, be sure to press the like button or no joke, no scam. You'll be receiving coal. Here's the comment of the day from the last video and don't forget to pick up your care and Christmas sweater from the description down below and on that note I'll shut up and let you guys enjoy the story times thank you so much happy holidays and I'll see you tomorrow I wouldn't recommend stealing your parents car probably a very horrible idea but I knew it would be an entertaining story time so uh, without further ado let's get into it and press the like button or no joke no scam your kids gonna steal your car one day and total it all right so uh, obviously we've talked about it before when there's weird kids kids in your neighborhood, you don't really have much of a choice about it. And the person who sent this in to me happened to live next door to a kid whose parents worked all the time and they had good jobs. So there was like a lot of money in the house, but because they were working all the time, they didn't really do a whole lot of the parenting thing. Like if you were to ask this kid the last time his parents told him how to treat anyone or, you know, like how to behave, he would just look at you like it was a foreign concept. Basically their parenting game was this, just buy him whatever he wants and uh, if anyone tells you that there's any issues pretend that there are none I wouldn't recommend that parenting style you know I'm not a parent I just feel like that's how you end up making a kid that steals your car and crashes it but basically this kid would just uh, base his entire personality on showing off stuff that his parents had just bought him to all the other neighborhood kids which was fine nobody really cared he was just really obnoxious about it because whenever he would show off his new stuff he would just insinuate that everyone was jealous and act like everyone was jealous even though no one actually was jealous for example when the hoverboards were a thing you know those things everyone used to be scooting around on on like vine back in the day he had gotten one and was showing it off to everyone in the neighborhood and it just so happened a bunch of the people in the neighborhood were like BMXers, skaters, and so they thought it was cool but it wasn't like they really cared that much, they didn't want one or anything, they were just like, oh that's nice. And for no reason while this kid is showing it to them, he's like, yeah, I know you guys are jealous, but your parents just don't work as hard as mine, so they don't have money, and that's why you can't get one. And I don't trust you guys to use it, because I think poor people like to break nice things. And everyone was just like, bro, what are you talking about? No one's even asked to be on it, and even then, why are you just saying that none of us can afford it? Let's put it this way, buddy. If your parents have a lot of money, and you live in the same neighborhood as these people, chances are these people's parents also have money. I just don't don't think they necessarily wanted a hoverboard and if they did they wouldn't be rolling around like yeah that's right don't steal this baby it's awesome I know you're jealous but whatever that was his attitude and uh, after a couple weeks of no one really caring about stuff he was flexing he decided to up the ante I don't know if it was just because he wanted attention from everyone or what but he starts talking about how he would take his mom's car when she would work late, I guess she would like have a carpool situation where she would leave to go to work but her car would still be home. He was taking her car, going to the drive through and getting milkshakes late at night, and uh, his mom apparently knew about it and was cool with it because she thought that he was responsible and mature enough to drive. Not 16, by the way, about 14 years old, which, listen, I don't care how quote-unquote mature you think your kid is. There's no reason for them to be driving alone late at night through the city to go get a milkshake. Like, what are you talking about? You live on a farm, you're driving a truck to pick up hay or something, something when you're 14 I guess that makes more sense but I feel like it's a really bad idea to have a kid driving on public roads and so everyone is kind of like dude your mom lets you drive saying it in a way of like I don't think that's a good idea this sounds like a bad idea and he goes off about his mom is just so much cooler than their parents and their parents are lame and don't actually want them to be mature grown-ups and I don't necessarily think it has anything to do with their parents not wanting them to be mature grown-ups it's just their parents actually actually care about them and are like you don't need to be driving a car when you're 14 years old alone at night anyways he just kept flexing it how he would steal the car all the time and he asked if anyone wanted to go with him next time he took the car to go get milkshakes 
And obviously, everyone was really apprehensive. And the person who sent this in to me was like, no, absolutely not, which is the smart decision. Definitely don't get into a car with someone that doesn't have their license. That just seems like a horrible idea. In fact, I would be a little wary of people that do have their license. There's a reason there's so many car accidents, okay? There's a lot of dumb people driving cars in America. Always be a little bit more like, hmm, when someone says they're willing to drive, but especially in this situation. But there were a couple kids in the neighborhood who were, uh, adventurous probably isn't the right word. We'll go with stupid, who were a little more stupid than everybody else. And they decided that they were going to go along with him to the drive through and uh, get these milkshakes. And so that night, the guy says that they're going to take the car and go get milkshakes and everyone's going to sneak out, blah, 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 blah. And the subscriber is like, all right, you guys have fun with that. I'm not going to go. And they are relentlessly making fun of him, saying that he's a wimp. He's afraid of his parents, blah, blah, blah. Which, listen, I don't think there's anything necessarily horrible about being a little bit afraid of what your parents will do if you get caught in a stolen car car late at night. But anyways, uh, a bunch of the kids sneak out, they get in the car, and this spoiled, entitled kid who apparently has permission to be driving the car starts driving to the drive through And listen, I don't know if he had actually done it before or what, I don't know if this was actually something he did on the regular, but either way, him wanting to be a show off the subscriber heard about this later from everyone that was in the car started like asking everybody if they wanted to see something cool and obviously the people in the car were like yes i would like to see something cool and he started being a show off which listen he already probably was a horrible driver no experience, probably can barely reach the pedals, and here he is asking if they want to see something cool before showing off while driving. This is just going to end bad. I don't know why people want to show off in cars, because here's the reality of it, alright? I know a lot of people don't look at it this way. A car is just a giant metal death trap that weighs like a ton, and we're just hurtling across the earth at 60 miles per hour, and the only thing preventing us from becoming a pancake is just the other people around us in, like, our choices. It's not really something you want to goof off with and be like, oh, I'm going to show him off, but whatever. He starts deciding that he's going to try to drift. Keep in mind, this guy has no clue what he's doing. He does not have his license. This is probably the first time he's ever driven the car. But he starts, like, going fast up to this corner. And at this point, everyone in the car starts yelling at him, stop, stop, don't do this, please don't do this, bro, stop, it's not funny. Because they're like, okay, this is not going to end well. He's trying to show off and he doesn't know what he's doing. Well, he takes that chance to be like, guys, I do this all the time, don't worry about it. Yeah, apparently he's just got that Tokyo Drift lifestyle on a daily basis. He is consistently just tearing up the track by drifting, but whatever he comes into this corner and he comes in way too fast And he yanks the wheel way too hard and the car just starts turning sideways Not in a drift way, but in a like out of control sideways skid way and everyone in the car is yelling They're like, oh my god, what did you do? You're such an idiot because here they are just sliding across the road Thankfully, it's late enough at night that there's no one else on the road. Like, seriously, such a lucky situation. But they end up hitting the curb, going up onto the curb, and then the back left door smacks into a light pole that had been, like, you know how it's situated on the curb on the corner. And immediately, the car stops. The, the guy turns the engine off, and he's like, what just happened? And everybody in the car that wasn't driving starts yelling at him, saying he's an idiot. What's wrong with you? And everyone's okay, like everyone's shaken up, the airbags had gone off, but everyone's okay. And so they get out of the car and they're looking at it, and the car's in really bad shape. Everyone's fine, thank goodness, they're insanely lucky, like this is a stupid situation, very preventable. This is why you don't steal your parents' car, and if you're gonna steal your parents' car, you don't try to show off to people if you don't know how to drive, bro. Even if you do know how to drive, don't do it. Either way, everyone's looking at the car and it's messed up, and the spoiled kid just starts freaking out. Understandably, he just crashed his mom's car, and he's like, my mom's gonna kill me, my mom's gonna kill me, my mom's gonna kill me. And everyone is like, yeah, you're gonna be in trouble, but they're wondering why he's so nervous, because apparently she knows he's driving the car, right? Which, she was gonna be mad that he crashed it, but you would think that he wouldn't be as nervous. Because, like, I don't know, if you're letting your 14-year-old kid drive your car around, you just kind of have to come to terms with the fact that he might crash it. Like, it's a possibility. 
If you think that your kid's going to be an incredible driver and never get into an accident, you're kind of dumb, bro. I don't know what the statistics are, but I'm sure, like, even most 16-year-olds get into a fender bender within their first year of driving. Yeah, your, your kid who's dumber is definitely not gonna have a great time, but that's when he reveals to everyone that, um, he might have exaggerated a little bit how much his mom knew about the situation, and everyone is like, what do you mean you exaggerated a little bit? And he says that she actually has no clue that he takes her car sometimes and she would be pissed and like the only reason he's been able to do it is because she works late so she's not around to keep an eye on it and now everyone who's in the car is pissed because they're like hold on you're telling me that we've been riding around in a stolen car all night on top of it you said that your mom knows about it she doesn't and now you've crashed it and we're all here and that's why you're freaking out is because your mom's going to realize that not only have you been stealing her car, but you've totaled it. And the guy's like, yeah, you guys need to help me out. We need to come up with a story. And everyone who's with him is like, no, 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 no. I'm not helping you come up with a story. I'm going to tell your mom everything because they're not going to get blamed for this. Are you kidding me? Plus, with the way that this kid is acting, you know that if they help him, quote unquote, come up with a story, he's just going to end up blaming them for it, saying they made him steal the car and whatnot. And so they say that they're going to tell his mom. And he's like, you guys can't do that. You're going to get me in trouble. And they're just like, yeah, bro, I know you're going to get in trouble, but I don't really know what you would like us to do. There's no way we're going to be able to come up with a story that people are going to believe as to how the car got totaled. Because how do we have it? Who stole it? Like, someone's got to take the rap for it. And he says, well, it's not going to be him. Which, listen, man, if you were the one who stole your mom's car, you didn't tell anyone you're stealing it. They all think that this is legit. Then, yes you're gonna be the person who takes the fall especially if you did it like you just expect someone to say that they stole someone's car for him when he's the idiot that decided to do all this and listen no one should have gone with them like the subscribers the smartest guy in the story for hearing about this secondhand but I definitely would just not recommend getting in a, a car that someone dumb is driving but especially in this situation yes you should take the blame considering this was 100% your idea and as they're standing there a car drives by and they pull over and make sure they're okay Okay, and they say they're gonna call someone and at that point everybody that isn't the kid who's took the car decides that they're getting out of there they start walking home because they're not that far and they leave him to take care of it and as they're leaving he's like where are you guys going this is unfair and they're like look dude you've got to deal with this so after that no one's really sure exactly what goes down but uh someone called his mom because what they do know is the next morning the car was gone from where it had crashed probably towed away and uh, there was a sign on his door saying that none of the neighborhood kids could knock because he was not going to be allowed outside until he graduates high school. Which was probably more of an angry letter than a reality. I don't think she's actually going to keep him inside forever. That being said, I can understand why his mom is pissed, bro. Imagine getting that call. You're at work doing your thing. You carpooled to try to save some money. You get a call. Hey, ma'am, your son, who's too young to drive, has totaled your car. Can you please come pick him up? You're like, he did what? Uh, he didn't really hang out with a lot of people after that. He would try, but it was always awkward. And whenever anyone would bring up the fact that he crashed his mom's car, he would get really defensive. Which, listen. And I understand that you probably don't want to hear about it, but yeah, the people who were in the car you stole and crashed are probably not going to let you live that one down, bro. You basically made them an accessory to a crime that they didn't know was happening. As for the car itself, it did end up getting totaled, or they sold it. I mean, it was never in the driveway again, but just based on how uh, it looked when it was crashed, probably ended up getting totaled. I would definitely not recommend totaling your parents' car. If he did end up getting grounded forever, it's not like you could really blame the parents, bro, because uh, not only only did they have to go buy a new car because of you but on top of it you stole the car and had a bunch of other people there with you too you couldn't have just gone and done something stupid alone you had to get the entire neighborhood involved super swag either way i thought the story was just absolutely insane i would not recommend stealing your parents car ever but if you enjoyed the video please be sure to press the like button let me know what you thought in the comment section down below I know this one's shorter than what we've been doing recently, but I just thought it was a good one. So, uh, like I said, if you did enjoy, like, comment, subscribe. If you don't know what to comment, go ahead and comment the word Geico down below, because let's just hope that this guy had some good insurance. You know what I'm saying? The insurance probably isn't going to help when they mention that it was stolen by their son, though. Today, I've got a very funny story time for y'all. It was sent in to me, and it's about a furry that was in this guy's class that apparently ended up biting the teacher. Uh, I know not all furries are running around biting people. That being said, when I hear about someone being this cringe, you know I have to make a video about it. So without further ado, let's get into it.
Alright, so the person who sent this in to me didn't really know a whole lot about most of their classmates, which, I'm not gonna lie, is probably the ideal way to do it. I'm not saying you should ever go out of your way to be antisocial or anything, but like, if you know every single person in every one of your class's backstory, you're probably a little bit too nosy for your own good or you think you're living in a movie. But there was one classmate in particular in one of his classes that he had to know a lot about because they were the type of person that was just constantly updating everyone on everything going on in their life. And it just so happened that this person was a furry. And I know it's become a lot more common now and like I know not every furry is an insane weirdo. If for whatever reason you're watching this and you're starting to get mad or whatever, then like just realize there's probably people out there that are furries that aren't super cringe crazy weirdos. I don't know where they are, those stories don't get sent in to me, it's not like I met a very normal person is a funny story time. So just keep that in mind, this particular person was a furry who was super cringe. And they were one of those people who didn't even like keep that level of reasoning of, oh I'm dressing up as an animal, like they genuinely thought that they had the species of an animal. And this person in particular would always talk about how they were a wolf soul and they accidentally were a wolf soul put into a human body. In whatever, even if you really like animals, you do have to understand that we're not in an anime, alright? It's not like you can be out here with the soul of a cheetah. I don't think that's really how it works. Maybe I'm wrong, but the idea that you're running around like, I have the soul of a parakeet. Like, what, what does that even mean, bro? But this person was convinced that they should have been a wolf and uh, by being a human they just weren't living up to their full potential, blah 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 blah. Which whatever, if you want to believe that and mind your business, then like that's up to you man. I guess I can't tell you not to think you're a wolf and if you're minding your business not hurting anyone, that's your right. Like welcome to America, you can do what you want. But one thing that was very frustrating is they would do like dog things to their classmates that were not necessarily normal. For example, whenever there was a new student, they would like go up to the new person and start sniffing them. Which is just very unnerving, especially if you don't know this person at all, even if I knew you relatively well. If you walked up to me and started like intensely sniffing me, I might be a little bit uncomfortable. I think anyone would be in that situation. You're like, yo, what's up man, long time no see, and they're like, hey! <laughs> oh yeah, baby, you smell delicious. But like he would sniff the new kids and when the new kids would be like, what are you doing? Why are you sniffing me? He would explain, oh, I'm a wolf. As if that just magically explains it. You know, a stranger sniffing you. Oh, I'm a wolf. Oh, why didn't you just say so? And they would still be like, please don't sniff me. And he would say that if he didn't get to sniff them, then he would find them threatening from then on. Which is kind of threatening someone in and of itself, like, let me sniff you or I'm gonna think you're a threat, is a very weird threat to make them let you sniff them. But whatever, it was just stuff like that, and on top of it, like, they would do this thing where they would start talking in the middle of class, like, hypothetically, you're in class and the teacher says, hey, someone read this paragraph. They would volunteer, which is really annoying when people volunteer to read and they can't read or they're goofing around, and then halfway through the paragraph, they would accidentally, and I'm doing very big air quotes right now, go back to like talking like a wolf, start growling and barking and whatnot, and when the teacher would be like, what are you doing? They would go, oh, I'm so sorry, my wolf soul must have came through. And it was just really annoying. Like everyone's trying to pay attention and read in class and this person's just pretending that they speak dog. Even if you were speaking wolf around real wolves, they would probably look at you and go, what is this weird human doing? I don't think they would instantaneously know what you were saying, but obviously everybody in class was just kind of aware of this person. And they weren't trying to make them feel bad, people weren't messing with them or anything. Sure, was it bizarre? Absolutely. But for the most part, it was more annoying than it was really getting in anyone's way. So it wasn't a big deal. However, they started to talk more and more like an animal and less and less like a human as the year went on. And it got to the point where they would just kind of bark out loud in the middle of class and howl at things. And obviously the teacher was not a big fan of this. Like, I feel like teaching a class is already hard enough. People don't want to pay attention. They're not paying attention. But now imagine on top of already trying to teach people who don't want to be there, you just have one student in particular that is pretending to be an animal growling at you and barking in the middle of your class. So the teacher started to get increasingly fed up with this behavior. 
and uh, started to get a little snappier whenever they would do it. Like, this person would bark in class and the teacher would go, okay, that's enough, stop it. Which is kind of hilarious if you think about it. That's probably what you would tell your dog if they were barking too much. Like, hey, enough, you know, but the furry would always get mad and be like, I have the right to express myself. Which, listen, true, you do have the First Amendment right to freedom of speech. However, expressing yourself is kind of limited if it's just disruptive to the class going on. Like, the teacher just can't let that happen. You want to just say you have a wolf soul, no issue. You start barking in the middle of class when they're trying to teach things. At that point, they have the right to tell you to shut up. It doesn't matter what you're saying, barking or not. I feel like if you just started screaming the Pledge of Allegiance out of nowhere in the middle of class, they'd probably tell you to shut up too. But whatever, they would always argue with the teacher, and the teacher just started to get more and more annoyed with it, as I think anyone would in this situation. The first time you have to tell someone to not bark at you, you're probably like, well, I never thought I would have to tell a person to stop barking at me. But by time 15, you're probably so fed up that you're starting to consider bringing a squirt bottle just just to train them like oh okay you want to be a dog you want to be a dog all right we'll see how you really like it psst, psst, spray bottle either way the teacher's patience was definitely running thin and like the interaction started to get a little bit more intense to the point where the person would bark and the teacher would be like you do know you're not an animal right you don't have a wolf soul at first the teacher had just kind of been okay with letting them do their thing but now that it was disrupting the class they were trying to nip it in the bud as much as humanly possible Except instead of nipping it in the bud, the person would just get insanely defensive about being told that they don't have a wolf soul and get even angrier, and it was just this infinite loop. But one day, there was a new kid who ended up coming into class, and sure enough, the furry guy, in the middle of class while the teacher is teaching and everyone's paying attention, gets up out of his seat, gets down onto all floors like he's gonna crawl somewhere, and starts crawling over to the new kid. And just imagine, it's your first day in a new school, you don't really know what's going on, you're not familiar with much from around here, and in the middle of one of your classes, you look over and you see one of the students crawling over to you on all fours. You'd probably be a little scared. And so when the new person turns around and sees this person crawling towards them, they do what any be any reasonable person, excuse me, would do. And they kind of let out a little yell and like, ah, what are you doing? And before anyone even looks, they kind of know who it's going to be. And the teacher says, get up off all fours and says the person's name, like before they even see them. And the furry kind of like sticks their head up and cocks their head to the side the way that a dog does when it hears something. And the teacher goes, yes, I'm talking to you. Stop being weird and messing with the new kid, which I have to say is probably not the best language for a teacher to use. But at the same time, when you have someone crawling around on all floors trying to sniff the new kids, like what else are you going to say? Anyways, the furry disregards this, gets back down on all fours, walks over, or should I say crawls over, excuse me, to the new kid and just gives him like a deep whiff on the leg. Which, once again, already creepy enough to be the new kid, but now you have someone crawling towards you on all fours and then just, like, taking a deep sniff out of your calf. And the new kid, not knowing what's going on, flicks his calf out and kind of, like, it doesn't kick the furry in the face, but kind of, like, get off me. Which, before anyone's like, why would they do that? Imagine someone just crawls up to you and starts sniffing your leg with no explanation. You would probably flick your leg at them too. But the furry yells out something about how, like, why would you do that? And tells the teacher that they got kicked in the face. And the teacher, instead of pulling out a taser and tasing the person who just had their legs sniffed, looks at the furry and goes like, well, if you weren't crawling around sniffing people's legs, that wouldn't happen. And the furry is like, you need to punish him, he can't do that, da 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 Which, yeah, I, I think you can, man. Like, I think if someone gets close enough to you to sniff you when you've told them to stop and, like, they hit you, sure, violence is never the answer, but what do you expect someone to do in that situation? Like, if you're just crawling around smelling strangers, one of them is going to punch you in the face. If you don't expect that to happen, I think you need to go outside more because that's going to happen. And the teacher's not having any of it, and they're like, look, I'm not going to punish this person who's new here because they didn't know what was going on when you crawled up to them on all floors on fours. 
and started sniffing them. And the furry starts getting mad, but instead of continuing to argue with the teacher, like using any reasoning or any real argumentation whatsoever, they just start going full wolf soul mode, I'm doing air quotes again, and barking at the teacher like, woo, 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 woo. And the teacher doesn't know what to do, so they keep yelling, being like, stop barking at me, I can't understand what you're saying. And the furry is like barking at them and then going back to English and saying, sorry, when I get mad, I only speak dog. Which, listen, all right, if you want to be a furry, like I said, if you, if you just want to like be a furry and not uh, sniff people, that's up to you, man. It's America. But don't pretend that you can talk to dogs, all right? Like, come on, come on. It's already kind of weird to pretend that you're an animal, you know? Like I said, you can do it. It's kind of weird. But you can do it. That's fair. The second you start being like, oh, I speak cat and meowing, expecting cats to really understand you, though. You're losing me. You're really, really losing me. What do you think this is? X-Men or something? Either way, the teacher keeps being like, stop barking at me, and they keep being barked at. And finally, the teacher has enough, and they say that they're going to call the principal, and they can come handle this, because they they're over it. Which, they've really been trying to solve it for an extended period of time right now anyways, so I can't really blame them for putting in the call. But suddenly, when the principal is going to be called, the furry has a drastic change and can magically talk in English again. Wouldn't you just, uh, be so shocked by that? Apparently, they only speak dog when they're angry, but as soon as they're in trouble, they can speak English again. It's almost like they're making the entire thing up. Either way, they start pleading with the teacher, like, no, don't call the principal, they already don't like me, like, please don't call, I'm just gonna get in trouble, don't do that, seriously, please. And the teacher just is not going to work with this student whatsoever. They're like, look, this has been a problem for so long, the entire school year, you never listen, you're sniffing people, and on top of that, you're just disrupting the class, barking at me all the time, and you never listen. So I understand that you might have dealt with the principal before, but you've really left me no choice in this situation. And the furry is like, well, you always have a choice. You could just not call the principal I'm asking you not to. Which, listen, here's my advice to you, Mr. Furry Bro. If you don't want to end up in trouble with the principal, don't constantly interrupt the class. I also would love to know why the principal had beef with him in the first place. Like, the last time he was in the principal's office, he peed in the corner or something to mark his territory. Like, why was the principal so angry at this guy already? And uh, the teacher goes through with the call either way and calls and tells them to come get him because he's just being disruptive. She can't teach the class, blah, 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 blah. And now the furry is mad and he gets back down on all floors and starts like scratching the ground, almost like a bull that's about to charge. I didn't know that was a dog thing. But the teacher looks at him and is like, what are you doing? Get up off the ground. And when she says, get up off the ground, he gets on all fours and starts bear crawling. Surprisingly fast, probably because he had a lot of practice doing it. Like, no one should be able to bear crawl as fast as this guy did. But I guess if you're literally crawling around everywhere on all floors, on all fours, I keep doing that, I'm sorry. Technically, he's crawling around on all floors, though. If you're always doing that, you're probably gonna get pretty quick at it, you know? Like, I I'm sure unicycling is not efficient, but if you forced yourself to unicycle 26 miles a day, you'd probably get pretty quick at it, way quicker than anyone would think. And he charges the teacher in the bear crawl formation, and the teacher only has time to let out a scream of, like, stop, before he bear crawls over there, and all the students see is him just sink his teeth into the teacher's calf. Which is just absolutely bonkers, man. Like, if you want to be a furry, we've been over this, it's America. That being said, don't go around biting people, are you crazy? Furries already get enough crap. The last thing you would want to do if you're a furry is make people think you're even weirder. And I promise, after they see someone run at their teacher on all fours and bite them, they're gonna think you're pretty weird. And the teacher just lets out like a yelp, more surprised than hurt, really. Just like, ah, you bit me, you bit me. And instead of saying anything in English now, the furry has gone full dog mode, apparently. Just completed the transformation, gone full werewolf, and just is growling while just like still biting and won't let go. And the teacher is like, let go, let go. And the furry just won't let go and starts to bite down harder. And now the teacher's yells are starting to sound more painful. And so she does what I think is more of a reaction than it is like some well thought out, very uh, well designed plan. 
She grabs a ruler off her desk and just like smacks the furry in the head. And it doesn't make the furry necessarily pass out or anything, but I think it more surprised them that the fact that the teacher was willing to do something, because they finally let their bite grip go of the teacher's leg. And at that point, the teacher does, like, another leg push thing. Doesn't kick him, but just kind of, like, pushes the furry away and is like, why did you bite me? What's wrong with you? And now I think the furry is confused because they just start saying that, like, I don't know what came over me. I, I went full wolf. Yeah, dude, this isn't Twilight, all right? Who do you think you are? Jacob from Twilight? Taylor Lautner himself? I don't think so. I don't think that there's magically some gene inside you that just makes you run around and start biting people. And then you come to and you're like, oh, I don't know what possibly could have happened. Well, you were running around biting people. That's what possibly could have happened. And the teacher's not buying it. Nobody's buying it. And they're like, you're really in trouble now. And so for the next two minutes, they're arguing back and forth. The furry trying to say they're not responsible for what happened because they don't know what came over them. It happens sometimes. They go full wolf mode, blah, 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 which is probably not going to be a very good excuse when you get to the principal's office, especially if they know you already. They're like, we've been over this. You're not a wolf. And now you bit a teacher on the leg and like just kept biting them until they hit you with a ruler. And when you were caught, you just tried to say that it wasn't real, it didn't count like an RPG game, or you, you lost control of yourself. That's not how it works. Also, I'm just saying, if it is true that you are such a furry that you lose control of yourself when you get mad and just start trying to bite people, I don't think you're, like, safe for normal society. I know 99.9% .9 of people aren't like that, but on the off chance you're out there and you start getting mad and you start being like, I should bite people as hard as I can, that's not normal. You should probably see someone for that, because you're either going to end up in jail when you bite someone and they sue you for assault, or, or, okay, you're gonna end up in jail for, like, uh, something else, because that's a very weird thing to get the feeling to do. Not once have I ever been looking at someone when I'm really pissed off and been like, mm, I should try to eat them. At that point, though, the security guards show up, and they're like, all right, we gotta go. And he's not happy about it, and he's in the corner, and the guy asks to see the injury on the teacher's leg, so she shows him. And it's a giant bite mark, bro. Like, you can see the molars, to be honest. You probably could have identified him with dental records based on this bite mark. It's just insane. And the security guard can't believe it. He's like, wait, he actually bit you? I thought you were exaggerating. Which I don't know why he would think that. I don't know why a teacher would decide to go with being bitten if they were going to exaggerate, but whatever. And uh, they were like, all right, well, we got to go. And he's still in the corner and he doesn't want to go. That much is obvious. So the guard starts to approach him. And as soon as he approaches him, the kid starts growling again. And he starts like getting down, looking like he's going to strike. But before he can even strike, the guard just kind of grabs him. Not in a like, I'm going to fight you way, but in just a like, I'm just going to pick you up way by the shoulders where his arms are. So he can't flail his arms around and just picked him up. And that goes to show you how big the furry kid was too, where this guy just grabs him by the shoulders and picks him up. He was also a strong dude and just walks him out of the class. And what was hilarious about that is he was all like squatted down, ready to, to strike, you know, and this guy's method was just, ah, I'm not being bitten by you. I'm not going for that. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick you up. So whatever, he leaves, takes him to the office. I don't really know what goes down in the office. The person who sent this to me wasn't in the office. But what we do know for sure is he's expelled. I don't really know what you expect to happen at the school if you bite your teacher and leave an insanely large mark on your leg. I think they're just kind of required by law to expel you at that point. And what happened in this particular school district when you got expelled is you got sent to this like behavioral school for all the kids that have been misbehaving. And had gotten expelled and it was known for being a very rough school because obviously if everyone at the school is there for fighting too much, then it's going to be a very rough place to be. And they knew one kid who had been at their school that had been sent there that they still talked to and they said that the first day this kid had started doing it again and started biting people. Only difference was, like, no one really fought back too much in that situation other than flicking their leg at him. But when he bit one of the kids at this school, it proceeded to be a, uh, a furry beatdown. Which, listen, you'd think after getting expelled for biting someone once, you would realize, like, oh, okay, I probably just shouldn't bite people. 
the fact that he got expelled, got to the school full of people that were way more threatening than the people that he was just at school with, who still expelled him and still thought it was going to end up good is hilarious to me. Like, all the kids at this school have been expelled from everywhere. I'm going to bite them. Dude, if biting the teacher that remained calm when you bit them didn't teach you a lesson, biting someone that's been expelled from five schools is gonna end with you getting punched in the face, and deservedly so. You can't just walk around biting people, bro. What's wrong with you? I'm surprised they sent him to a behavioral school instead of a kennel, man. Just really could have committed to the whole furry thing. Just send him to, like, some doggy daycare vibe. Thankfully, the teacher didn't get a scar or anything. That would have been a pretty insane scar. She just has, like, this bite mark on her leg. Oh my gosh, what happened to your leg? How would you get that scar? Oh, I'm a teacher. Uh, what does that mean? Yeah, well, some crazy kid thought that he had a wolf soul and bit my leg hard enough that I permanently have a scar in the shape of his bite mark on my leg. Not a big fan of it. Either way, I would just not recommend biting your teacher. Definitely a little bit out there. And today I have a story time that was sent in to me about a particularly spoiled individual who uh, apparently thought that poor people have a smell to them. You know, that classic thing when you walk into a room and say, Smells broken here, baby! Either way, I thought the story time would be funny. Obviously, you can't smell how much money people have, and even if you could, who really cares? It doesn't make anyone cooler. That being said, I thought you guys would enjoy it, so uh, without further ado, let's hop right in. Alright, so the person who sent this in to me went to a school that was a little bit different structured. They were like technically seniors in high school, but they only changed classes three times a day and were with their uh, teachers for two hours at a time. Which is a little different than how they traditionally do it in America for the most part, at least on my end. We like would change classes every hour, we had six classes a day. But because of the way they had this structured, obviously the kids could get to know the teachers a little bit better than the standard structure. And vice versa, the teachers could kind of understand how students learn, start teaching to that style. It makes sense when you think about it, but that's just kind of what they had. But there was one particular kid that he was with for two hours a day that had to have been the most entitled person that he had ever interacted with. Like, for some reason, this kid just hated everyone around him at any given time and always had to be reminding people that he was better than them even if they had never wronged him like I think even if you're in a fight with someone it's obnoxious to go I have more money than you I'm better than you like no one really cares right that being said this kid wouldn't even need to be in a fight with someone to start getting mouthy and start saying things like that for example when everyone turned 16 uh, a few years before he had had another class with them and when he had gotten a car, he had just kind of gone around to everyone who was 16 who didn't have a car and been like, why don't your parents love you enough to get you a car? Which is mad out of pocket, man. I think their parents love them. It's just not every family can afford to go drop thousands of dollars on their 16-year-old uh, kid's car. Especially because, of course, he had gotten a Mercedes and was just reminding everyone that his car cost more than the teachers make in a year. Which I'm sure, if you're a teacher, just felt absolutely great. You know, you've only slept five hours this week, you're working your butt off to grade papers on time, only to overhear some student saying that he's driving a car that costs more than you make in a year. Mmm, pure motivation. And once he got his car, he would constantly use that to make fun of people too. But he would use that against the teachers. For example, whenever a teacher would give him a quote-unquote bad grade that he didn't feel like he deserved, he would just use the fact that he had a better car to the teacher to say why they got a bad grade. Like... As if that has any bearing on it, but for example, let's say he was supposed to write a seven-page essay, and he wrote one paper that was just nothing but the word meh over and over and over again, right? When the teacher would give him an F because he just didn't even do the assignment and just repeated a word over and over for a paper, he would confront them about it in front of everyone, not even like after class, and be like, I know you're probably jealous because my car costs more than you make in a year and you're pathetic and you make no money, but you can't give me bad grades because you're jealous of my car, otherwise I'm gonna have to report it to the principal, blah blah blah. And the teachers would always be like, what are you talking about? I didn't give you an F because of your car. And he would always be like, no, actually, you 100% definitely did. And that would get old, but it was almost like in any argument, he would pull out his car as like the, the ultimate argument ender. Well, I have a nicer car than you, which I've never understood people like this. Like, don't get it twisted. I do like cars. I think they're cool. 
but I don't feel like it's actually anything you need to bring up in an argument ever is what type of car you drive. Like, imagine you're arguing with someone. Yeah, man, will I drive an F-150? And it's like, yeah, will I drive a Mercedes? Like, who cares? Who actually cares? If you got beef with somebody and the only thing you have to talk crap back with is what car they drive, you should just drop the beef because you're definitely gonna look stupid. But he would bring it up whenever he had an issue with teachers and teachers obviously got more and more fed up with it as it gone along. And he would be like, oh, you're just mad that I have a car, blah, 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 blah. And a teacher would say, why does it matter? Why do you always bring up your car when you're arguing with me? I don't care about your car. Which is a reasonable reaction for an adult. Like, the teachers probably didn't care. I mean, sure, did it feel great that he was driving a car that cost more than they made in a year? Probably not. Does it actually change their day-to-day -day life at all? Like, they're still a teacher, and even then, it doesn't mean you can just do whatever you want. You just start driving a Ferrari everywhere in your neighborhood 300 miles per hour when the cops inevitably pull you over. Just be like, uh, my car costs more than yours, so therefore you're not allowed to pull me over. When you can afford a Ferrari, then you can pull me over, fed boy, and then, like, slam on the gas. But whenever teachers would ask him, like, why does it matter what car you drive? Why does that change the fact that you should treat your teachers with respect? He wouldn't even explain why it mattered at all, probably because he didn't have a good explanation. He would just say that they were, like, stupid and poor and jealous, and if they had wanted a nice car, they should have picked a different career because teachers should know that they're going to be broke, which is just so unnecessary, man. I feel like it's just a well-known fact at this point that teachers don't get paid a ton of money. I don't think that's some well-guarded secret. But still, they're choosing to do a very important job, which is teaching you for not a lot of money. The last thing you should want to do in that situation is make them feel as bad as possible about it. Like, what? what is the point in that? Yeah, you know how you took a job to better the community for less money than you could have made elsewhere? You're a loser. Like, dude, do you want it to get even worse? I know in Nevada and Arizona, they just lifted the restrictions saying that you don't need a college degree to teach high school anymore just because there's such a teacher shortage. I feel like treating teachers like this is how it gets even worse. Pretty soon, they're just gonna have, like, high schoolers teaching middle schoolers math and whatnot. It's gonna be a disaster. Either way, this kid was just carrying himself that his car made himself better than anyone. Anyone who criticized him was obviously just a stupid poor jealous hater that could not comprehend the level of swag he had accessible to him. If this guy ran on batteries, his batteries only took swag. No double A's, baby. And it was swag with at least four A's in it. I don't even know if four A's is a battery, but he was running on swag batteries, apparently. Oh, my car's cooler than you, therefore I'm allowed to run you over in the Walmart parking lot. Anyways, that went on for a while, but eventually he kind of realized, shocker, that yelling at them and calling them poor and jealous didn't really work for improving his grade at all. If anything, it made them grade his assignments a little bit harder. Oh, you don't like the grade that I gave you on your essays because I'm poor and stupid? Well, wouldn't you know it, next essay I'm gonna grade the grammar a lot harder. So he shifted to something else that you would expect a spoiled entitled kid to do and started trying to pay off his teachers. And listen, obviously teachers aren't going to be very prone to taking bribes. I just don't feel like that's something they would do. Maybe some would. But if you are going to offer to bribe a teacher, you would probably want to go about it in a way that was a little bit more hush-hush, private office hours type of vibe, just because if they get asked in the middle of class, will you accept a bribe, they're going to have to say no. They don't really have a choice because now there's a bunch of people watching them get asked about a bribe doesn't take a rocket science to find out that they were probably going to say no anyways, but when you go, excuse me, teacher, will you please accept a bribe to raise my grades? In front of everyone, they're going to say no. But sure enough, one day, it's really quiet. Everyone's working on something. You know how, like, when you're in class, everyone's working on a project or whatever. It just kind of gets that, like, silent air over the room. Well, he goes up to the teacher's desk and says something about how, like, his parents are really coming down on him because his grades are down, and he was wondering if there's anything he can do to boost his grade. And, uh, the teacher starts kind of answering the question the way you would expect a teacher to. Well, I posted some extra credit stuff online you're more than welcome to do. You can turn in your missing assignments. I won't even dock you down. Here's the assignment numbers. Just do them. Blah, blah, blah. Even after this kid had called him poor over and over and over again and stupid and jealous, he's still willing to work with the kid and be like, yeah, sure, there's things you can do to raise your grade. Because I think he understood that it just sucks to be in trouble for bad grades. 
And the kid starts being like, no, I don't want to do any work. I was wondering if there was anything I could do to raise my grade. And the teacher is obviously confused because he doesn't understand what he's saying. What do you mean you don't want to do any work, but you want to raise your grade? That's not really how it works. And the kid's like, well, I was hoping there was something I could do to raise my grade. And out of his pocket, he pulls a single $20 bill. Which, listen, I know teachers don't make a lot of money, but I don't know if $20 is enough to make them potentially get fired and, like, lose their career. I don't know what a school would do, but I'm going to assume that a school would not react too kindly to a teacher taking $20 to change people's grades. And the teacher just goes, I'm not going to take that. And the kid goes, yeah, I know you won't. And goes to, like, slide it into his hand. He had seen a few too many movies, I guess, and just thought that, like, someone saying no to the bribe was them saying yes without saying yes, so therefore they couldn't get in trouble, wink, wink. But the teacher pulls his hand back and is like, I'm not taking that. And the kid has the nerve to go, why not? And so the teacher, not realizing how dumb the kid is or how smart he is, starts answering his question. Well, it's very against ethics for me to take money to change your grade. On top of it, I would get fired. I would lose my job. I'd probably have to go to a different school district if I could get rehired. Even then, you have a bunch of missing assignments and I've offered you extra credit. So if you're not willing to do that, do you just expect me to take money? And the kid's standing there and he's almost confused at what the teacher's asking him. Like, well, yes, of course. Of course I expect you to take money like that's kind of the look he has on his face and he just kind of tells the teacher like well you're never gonna get a cooler car if you're not trying to work with me which listen I don't think people really care about cars that much bro I understand to this guy apparently it was the utmost sign of social class but I feel like most people don't care that much especially to risk their career and on top of it you were gonna give him $20 what did you expect him to do walk on down to the BMW dealership walk in slam the $20 on the table I'll take your finest machine they would probably ask him what type of crack he's smoking because he can't buy a BMW at that price even if you were trying to incentivize him to get a new car it's not like you're giving him a new car to change your grade I can understand why he might say yes I'm not saying it would be morally right I'm just saying if someone's gonna give you like a $40,000 car it's probably a little bit more tempting than 20 bucks and that's just a little bit too insulting for the teacher and he puts his pencil down and he's like, do you really think that I need $20 that badly? And the kid is kind of like, I don't know, I was just trying to be generous. And the teacher says that you're not being generous, you're just being disruptive. Now go sit down and do your assignment, I'm not taking your bribe. And the kid is like a little bit, you know, insulted at the fact that they wouldn't be able to take his money, blah, 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 blah. I just don't understand why you would be mad someone won't take a bribe. Like, trying to bribe someone is already crazy. You know, going out of your way to try to give someone money to look the other way. But being mad when someone won't take a bribe is even weirder. Like, oh, did you just expect everyone to be doing whatever you want them to do if you give them $20? Excuse me, officer, I am trafficking in 700 pounds of black tar heroin. Please look the other way. I've given you a $5 bill and a free jack-in-the-box meal voucher. Anyways, the bribery doesn't work, so he just starts going back to try to bully them. I don't know why he thought that would work now. He's like, dang it, bullying didn't work. So I tried to bribe them. Bribing didn't work, so I should go back to bullying. But anyways, one day he gets into a fight with the teacher and is belittling them, saying that they hate him because he's rich, blah, 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 blah. That's why they keep purposely giving him bad grades is because they're just so jealous of how much money he family has, blah, blah, blah. Which, listen, man, I don't think a teacher is going to give you bad grades because your family is rich. If anything, it's more annoying to fail you because that means that they have to deal with you next year. If a teacher really hates Hated you. I feel like the worst way they could handle you is teach you nothing but still pass you so that way next year you fail your class and you're someone else's problem. If the teacher isn't gonna do that, then like I don't think you can say that they really hate you. If they're failing you, it means that they're at least willing to deal with you another year. But one day the teacher had just finally have enough and as he's getting belittled for apparently being poor and dumb and da 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 da, the teacher stops him and is like, how do you know I'm poor? 
And the kid looks a little bit confused at the questioning, and he's like, truthfully, how do you know that I'm poor? Like, for all you know, I could have won the lottery 15 years ago, be worth more money than you would ever dream of, and just have decided to be a teacher to help the community. How do you know that that's not the case? And when he says that, a bunch of students are kind of like, yeah... Because they were just getting tired of it. You know, sure, he wasn't using it against them per se, but like, still, imagine every time a teacher does anything that someone doesn't like, they're like, oh, you only hate me because you're rich, or I'm rich, Meh. You'd probably get annoyed, so the second they said anything, you would be like, exactly, yes, you're very annoying. Either way, the kid kind of realizes that uh, the class isn't necessarily supporting him in this instance, so he decides to start, like, doubling down. And I don't know why people do that. It's probably just something to do with, like, pride or the, the human reaction to embarrassment or whatever. But for whatever reason, when people send me in stories, entitled people like this never take the chance when everyone is against them them to go, oh, maybe I'm in the wrong. Listen, are there times when the majority of people are wrong? Yes, throughout history that has 100% happened. That being said, when someone says something pretty standard, which is like, how do you know I'm poor and why do you always use that as an insult even if it matters and everyone's like, yeah, that's a good point. Maybe listen, maybe, maybe it's worth a listen, but he doubles down and is like, dude, you just hate me because you're jealous of my parents' success. And the teacher takes the time to point out to him again, I'm not grading your parents. If anything, congratulations to your parents. The American dream is to reach a level of success where you can, you know, do whatever you want, take care of whatever you need. Congratulations to your parents for reaching and achieving that level of success. I'm talking to you though. I'm not jealous of you. How do you know I don't have any money? And the kid is kind of like, well, you're a teacher, so they don't get paid a whole lot. And he says, yeah, but how do you know that being a teacher is like my main job? How do you know I didn't have a business before? How do you know my family's not rich? Like, how do you know any of these things? And the kid kind of has this confused look on his face, almost like he didn't know how to answer the question, because there really is no way. Theoretically, by just looking at someone, you have no clue how much money they have. There's tons of stories of, like, insanely rich dudes just acting like they're completely normal people, probably because they don't want people treating them better because they have money. Who really cares? At the end of the day, we're all ending up in the same dirt box, so whatever money you have attached to your name doesn't matter. Anyways, he's getting increasingly flustered because now the class is starting to make fun of him being like, yeah, dude, I just know you're poor even though I don't know you at all. And so somewhere in his mind, he's like, ah, oh, I've really got to go up. I I've really got to go up and just try to insult this man, put him in his place, let him know that I know he's poor. I don't know why it would matter even if he was, but he decides to just be like, well, I know that you don't have any money by the smell of you. You just smell like a poor person. Which, I mean, I'm not even sure what that means, bro. You smell poor. Like, what even is the smell of poor? Could you describe that? Ah, oh, you know, Axe body spray and ramen noodles. Like, what, how do you even know what a poor person would smell like? Even then, I don't understand why people get so caught up in how much money someone has. Even if someone has less money than you, it doesn't mean they're just wrong by default. Like, that's not a, a good response. Ah, yes, you've made a logical point that has shown my logic to be false. Well, you're poor. Like, it doesn't change the fact that they were still right. Either way, obviously, everybody is kind of like, bro, what do you even mean? Like, you smell poor people? What does that mean? And he starts going off about how when you're as rich and successful as him and his family is, you just have the ability to, to smell poorness on somebody. And a lot of people in the class are starting to get pissed off. Because it's not like everyone at this school is loaded, all right? It's not one of those schools where everyone in the student parking lot is driving something that cost, like, I don't know, the down payment on a pretty nice house. That's just not pretty commonplace. So a lot of people are starting to get irritated, and some of them are like, dude, do you consider me a friend? And he's like, yeah. They're like, well, I'm poor. Do you smell it on me? And he starts saying, well, that's different. That's different. And listen, man, you can either smell poor or you can't. You can't be like, I smell poor. And then when someone goes, oh, so you think I'm smelly? Be like, well, no. Because if they're poor, you would be able to smell them. Like, hypothetically, let's pretend that this X-Men power is a thing. He can sniff net worths. Either way, at that point, the teacher takes control back of the class. And he's like, you either need to apologize or you can go to the office and explain what you said. Because I'm just not going to be spoken to that way anymore. 
I'm your teacher and there's not much I can do to get rid of you until the school year ends, but I'm just not gonna let you like talk down to me and start saying things like you can smell poor people. That's absurd and you need to learn that even if someone has less money than you, it doesn't make them less of a person. Which I feel like uh, we all could kind of use right now. Not like individually, I'm just saying society-wise. People are like, well, who cares? They got the bag, though. Yeah, man, which is fair. Hey, get the bag. I'm, I'm supportive of that. That being said, just because someone got the bag doesn't mean that they now have magic powers where they can walk on water, do no wrong, and are literally the second coming of everything you've ever desired. If you got the bag, then good for you, man. Congratulations. But there's no reason to be marching around being like, oh, the stupid poor is just smelling up my air with their poor person breath and their poor person sweat. It just makes you look silly. If you got the bag, go enjoy it. I've never understood why people get the bag and then continue to be like involved in all this drama and problems and whatnot. You're rich. Just go do whatever you want. As for what happened after that, he kind of dropped the whole money act. I don't know if the principal told him something or what, but uh, what probably happened is the principal found out, told his parents, and his parents were like, no, 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 no. I'm rich. You're not rich. More parents have to do that. If your kid starts becoming an entitled person being like, oh, I have so much money. You need to just sit them down and tell them, you don't have any money. You own nothing. I own everything. And if you don't change the behavior, I'll change my will so you get nothing. I think spoiled kid behavior would massively change if that was the threat instead. You know, either behave yourself or you don't get anything in your inheritance. Watch how fast that attitude would change. It would go from you smells poor to like, sir, may I clean your shoes? It would be my honor to be able to appreciate a teacher of your caliber. This is actually one from my childhood. It's about the uh, librarian that my elementary school ended up getting like halfway through elementary school. She sucked, and what made it even worse is the fact that the librarian she replaced was, like, the goat of all librarians. Either way, I just thought it would be a pretty funny story time I thought you guys would enjoy, so without further ado, sit down, relax, enjoy the video, and be quiet, otherwise the librarian will have to smack you with a ruler. Alright, so I'm not trying to sound like too much of a nerd, but I've always been a uh, little bit of a fan of reading. I just like knowing things, I think it's fun, so I was always a big fan of the library from like the first time we ever did it in elementary school. The way it worked, at least at my school, was that we had like a different quote-unquote special class every day, which was just kind of like P.E., the library. We would rotate, we had a music class. And there were five different ones, and we would just have a different one every day for like an hour. Either way, when I first got there and we went to the library, I knew it was going to be a good time because the librarian opened up by saying you could check out like as many books as you wanted for as long as you wanted. And then gave out candy and was like, everyone's always welcome. Which, when you're in elementary school, might as well just be somebody like giving you the keys to your house or their house, sorry. Like, dude, if anyone gave me candy in elementary school, I was basically like, oh yeah, this person's probably as rich as Jeff Bezos and as nice as Santa Claus himself. Ah, uh, it's shocking I didn't get kidnapped now that I said that out loud, you know? Some guy pulls up in some, like, a, a windowless van. Hey, you want some candy? Elementary school me? Sure, man, where do I get in? Uh, honestly, I was a little stupid. <laughs> Anyways, I'm a like, little bit off topic there. Anyways, I really loved it. I would spend a lot of time in the library. I would ask my teacher during like free time if I could go to the library and I would just kind of read stuff in the library, check books out, blah, 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 blah. But because I was spending so much time in the library, obviously me and the librarian became like kind of friends. I mean, I don't really think you can be friends with someone who's in like a first, second grade. But she was always asking me what I was reading. We would talk about like her favorite books, my favorite books. It was just honestly a pretty solid vibe. And she was always really cool about letting me, like, check out books whenever I wanted. Technically, the way the system worked, you weren't supposed to have more than three books out at a time, but I was never, like, losing books, so she would just let me take a bunch home. I, I don't know. She was really cool, to be honest. And on top of it, it wasn't like she was only cool to me. If you were the type of kid who just didn't want to go out on the playground for recess or whatever, you didn't have anyone to sit with at lunch, whatever the issue may be, you were always welcome to, like, come into the library, play on the computers, hang out in there instead. She was just a really, really good teacher. However, the one downside is she was older. Not that that made anything bad in terms of, like, being old is bad. 
but it just meant that she had been doing this for a while and her retirement was getting closer. And at the end of third grade, she announced that this was going to be her last year being our librarian and that she was going to be retiring at the end of the year. And obviously, I was like, I, I'm pretty sad about it. I wasn't begging her not to retire or anything. I wasn't stupid. I understand people got to do what they got to do. And after you work for 45 years, you're probably just trying to get out of there, man. You're like, listen, I like being a librarian, but I'm out. Either way, I was pretty bummed, but she promised us that, like, you know, she would make sure that her replacement was good, blah, 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 and she really appreciated us being great students. And, uh, it was what it was. She was retiring, there wasn't much we could do about it, and on the last day she was there, I was helping her pack up some of her stuff, and she ended up, like, giving me a bunch of her personal books, and was like, you know, thank you for all the help, and it was, it was pretty sad, I'm not gonna lie. Little me was like, oh, it's gonna suck. But she promised me that her replacement was going to be as nice as her. So, I wasn't thrilled about her retiring, because she was kind of like my favorite teacher, I can't lie. But whatever, it is what it is, plus little kid me had more important things to be worrying about with summer break coming up, you know, as you know, summer break when you're a little kid is basically like, I, I, what's an adult version of summer vacation? I don't even think anything compares, bro. Summer vacation is just the ultimate freedom when you're a kid, because you literally can just do what you want for like three months. But whatever, I spent my summer just kind of hanging out, riding skateboards outside, whatever it may be. And finally, the school year starts coming back around, and I'm getting, like, a little bit of that excited, anxious feeling for the school year overall. And then I remembered that the librarian had retired. And uh, I was kind of nervous about who the next librarian was going to be. And my grandma had worked at the school I went to before I went there. She had retired, like, right before I got there. But she still knew some people in the office. And so I was kind of talking to her about it. And she decided that she was going to call one of her friends and see who the replacement was. So she called, and I was kind of standing there while they were talking about it, and uh, her face kind of was like, oh, 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 and it didn't seem too happy. And she hangs up, and she says that the superintendent had gotten involved and had moved a librarian from one of the different schools over to their school. They didn't get to pick the replacement that my librarian had wanted. And she had said that I shouldn't get my hopes up because I guess the librarian that we were getting had been a librarian at a different school but had been removed for like having too many issues with the teachers and the students just didn't really feel like the library was a welcoming place. And I don't really understand why school districts work like this. I've heard of this a lot. Like a teacher will have a bunch of bad experiences at one school, right? And instead of the superintendent being like, hey man, maybe teaching just isn't for you, they just move them. If there's a librarian getting so many parent complaints and having so many issues with the other teachers that they have to be removed, why would you just move them to another place? That's like having two cars, right? And one of them gets a flat tire. And you take the flat tire off one and you put it on the other. And you're like, maybe the tire will work now. It's still a flat tire. Just moving it onto another car doesn't make it start magically working. Either way, I was a little bit nervous, but I figured it would be fine, because if they're a librarian, as long as I'm quiet and just reading books, it should be no issue. So the first day of school comes, we didn't have to go to the library that day. I think we had PE that day or whatever. I don't remember, it was a long time ago, but like the third day into school, we ended up going to the library. And from the second we walked in, the vibe was very clearly different. The librarian before had had like bean bags and cool posters and cardboard cutouts and like model airplanes hanging from the ceiling, a solar system. It was just a really cool vibe to hang out in. And this one, you walked in, and it was almost like this lady had grown up in a prison, right? And she was like, hmm, what can I do to make this library feel as much like a prison as humanly possible? The library before had also had painted walls, like each wall was a different color. And uh, they had apparently gone over and painted all the walls this like gray. But not like a normal wallish gray, like a gray that was dark enough where it just darkened the room. There was no decorations except for like two posters and both posters were just like uh, about being quiet. But I don't know if you guys get the vibe. Do you ever see a poster in a school that's just very clearly from like last century? We're 22 years into the 21st century. At the time, what? I mean, maybe like 2006, 2007 probably-ish. 
But still, these posters about being quiet and listening are at least from like 1982. Probably the only two decorations this librarian has ever bought in her entire life. And uh, sitting there is a lady that looks kind of like, I don't know how many of you guys have read the Percy Jackson books, but he has this teacher that hates him and turns into a hag and tries to attack him. She kind of looks like that lady would be imagined to look like. Just, just, oh, just angry. If you've ever seen Jimmy Neutron, kind of like his teacher. And so we all go and we sit down at our tables and whatnot, and there's a little bit of, like, chatter. And when you were in the library, you were obviously supposed to be quiet, but our old librarian would kind of let us, like, whisper amongst each other because, I, I don't know, like, who really cares? If I hear people whispering in the library, I don't mind. Honestly, even if someone's talking, I don't really care. I, I'm sure the rules about being quiet are like, oh, some people are focusing, trying to read, blah, 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 blah. Whatever, but when people are whispering, you would have thought that this lady had been, like, insulted to the highest order. Some kid just walked in with a super soaker full of piss and started spraying all the books. That's how angry she was at this. She stands up and, like, slams both of her hands on the counter thing where you can check out books, and she's like, Do you guys not know what a library is? Are you so unintelligent? that you have not figured out that it is inappropriate to be this loud in a library. And obviously everyone's kind of got like that nervous, scared look now, and it goes silent. So it's silent now. We get it, okay? You gave us a little stern talking to. But she just goes full James Bond villain and starts giving us this monologue, right? She gets up, puts her hands behind her back, and starts kind of pacing around the library, not looking at us while like giving this speech about how the library was a place that she loved growing up, but one thing that she hated was that people wouldn't follow the rules, and so that's why she runs her library the way she would have dreamed it would have been ran. No talking, no disrespect for the rules. And as she's pacing, she finally gets near one of the posters that's like, hey, you know, be quiet, it's the library, you're not in charge. And she goes, this poster is how I feel. Does everyone understand? And we're all just sitting there kind of like, uh, sure. We're fourth graders, but sure. It was way over the top, way more intense than it had to be. And obviously all of us are just scared now. So we just kind of like look down at our desks where no one's making a noise. Everyone's quiet. And she starts saying that, like, I don't know what your old librarian did, but here's how we're going to handle things. And so, for example, our old librarian, who was super dope, obviously one of the things you learn when you're in, like, elementary school, I don't know if they still teach this, they did it at the time, the Dewey Decimal System, which is how you find books in the library. And our old librarian had, like, done lessons on it by giving us scavenger hunts and, like, hiding things in the books that you had to find using the Dewey Decimal System. And believe it or not, when you turn things into a game and you make it, like, a fun competition, people will enjoy it quite a bit more than just, like, boring worksheets that are too intense. But this librarian is like, we are going to be learning the Dewey Decimal System and just starts handing out worksheets. But here's the thing, man. If you've ever tried to do a worksheet on something like the Dewey Decimal System, I would honestly rather watch paint dry, bro. And what was more annoying is it's like the history behind it and all this stuff, which listen, whatever, maybe that's important. Someone down there is like, if you do not know the history of the Dewey Decimal System, you can't call yourself anyone who can read. You're not even literate. Yeah, all right, that's fine. But, like, you can just teach me how to use the Dewey Decimal System. I can learn how to use a drill and not need to know the entire history of the drill. And she's like, you guys are going to do this worksheet today. Do you understand? And everyone's just like, yes, ma'am. And uh, we start working on the worksheet, and it's about the history and whatnot. But she didn't give us any of the material to read about the history. It was just a worksheet with a bunch of questions about the history. So someone gets up and walks over and decides to ask a question, which is pretty reasonable, which is like, hey, where do we find the information that we're supposed to use to complete the worksheet? And the librarian looks up, and I will never forget the look she gave this kid, because it literally sent chills down my spine. 
It wouldn't now because I've seen the look a lot, but it was the first time I've ever seen someone look at somebody this way. You ever just seen someone look at someone and just by the look on their face, you can tell that they think the person they're talking to is actually so stupid that it's a miracle that they don't have to focus to get their lungs to breathe. That's the look she gave him and she goes, where are you right now? And the kid goes, school? And she scoffs at him and goes, yes, genius, but where are you in the school? And the kid's getting all nervous now because obviously this librarian's just like borderline bullying him. And he says, uh, the library. And she's like, wow, finally a smart answer. And everyone's just listening to this because it's so quiet you can hear a pin drop. So, if you're in the library, where do you think you could find information? And the kid's like, uh, books? And she looks at him and says, nothing gets past you, and then looks straight down at the paper. Which, listen, I guess, sure, should we probably have just started looking around the library? I guess, but we're in fourth grade, and is it really necessary to make a kid feel that stupid for just asking a question? I know stupid questions get asked all the time. I'm not denying that every now and then you hear someone ask a question that you can't believe came out of their mouth. But I feel like when you hand out a worksheet and don't tell anyone where to get the information, it's not unreasonable for someone to come up and go, where do I get the information? I don't understand why that was so insulting. And the kid turns around and he has like tears in his eyes as he goes back to his desk. And so now everyone's kind of looking around. And so people start trying to whisper to each other to be like, okay, well, where should we look for the book? Where do you think it would be? It's almost like if we understood the Dewey Decimal System entirely, it would have made it way easier to find the book on the Dewey Decimal System, at which point, why are we doing the worksheet? But people are trying to whisper amongst each other and be like, okay, what do we do? What do we do? Because we don't know how to find the book that we're supposed to apparently find to complete the worksheet to learn how to find the book we're supposed to find. It's just the stupidest assignment ever. But of course, she gets up, slams her hands down again, and is like, what did I say about the talking? And so everyone's just like getting nervous and scared because this lady's so intense for no reason. But there was another kid in my class who was also in the library all the time, and he was without a doubt our old librarian's favorite student. And at that point, he's like, ma'am, we don't know how to find the book, so we have to talk about how to find it. And she looks at him, stares daggers at him, and is like, you're daring to talk back to me right now? You do not speak back to me. And she starts tearing into him about how clearly he has no respect for teachers and has never spent time in the library before. Which is hilarious, bro, because, like, you would have thought this kid lived in the library with the old librarian, man. Like, you would have thought he had a tent somewhere in the nonfiction section and he just kind of guarded it at night. Full Ben Stiller night at the museum vibe. Like, this guy was always there. So the fact that she's calling him an idiot who's never been there is just hilarious. But he just goes quiet. And now everyone's just sitting there. No one knows what to do. We don't know how to find the book to do the worksheet. We don't know what's going on. So everyone's just sitting there not doing the worksheet. And about 15 minutes goes by. And she looks up, gets up, and starts walking around, I think, to, like, check our progress. You know when teachers walk around and just look at your worksheets? And as she's walking around, it probably became obvious that none of us have done anything because we don't know any information on the worksheet. We don't know where to find it. A few people had gotten up and had started looking around for it. But the other thing that was mad unfortunate is we had very tall bookshelves. Well, being in fourth grade, none of us are at a height where we can really see a lot of it. So chances are we probably walked past it like 20 or 30 times. But she just starts getting pissed and just yelling at, out loud at no student in particular, just about how like we were idiots who couldn't even find a book right, blah, 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 blah. Which, sure, maybe we're dumb for not being able to find the book. But isn't that your job to teach us? Like, you're the librarian. It would be your job to teach us how to find the book so we could not be idiots in your eyes. She's yelling out, and so another student decides to say something, and they're like, we don't know where the book is. How would you like us to do this? Which, you know when fourth graders start saying things that are logical to you that you're way off base. Like, fourth graders, for the most part, should be pretty illogical people. 
if even they're like, how do you want us to do this if we don't know where the information is and you just like look at them and it makes a perfect sense, then you probably make no sense. Either way, she gets mad at that and is like, well, I'll show you where the book is if that means you guys will actually do some work during this hour. She gets up, storms over to some like or a random bookshelf where none of us were looking and goes up to one of the shelves that we can't see because fourth grade vertically challenged grabs a book and is like, here it is and throws it on the floor. No need to throw books, uh, especially when you're a librarian and especially when it's just not your book. Like, hey, man, well, hold on. The taxpayers paid for this book. Don't be tossing it around. Usually teachers are like, we're underfunded. This lady was like, we have too much money. I've got to start breaking books. For all we know, she's like the only librarian that has ever just burned a bunch of books to keep warm. It's so nice not having to pay a heating bill by just bringing home books to burn in the fireplace. Whatever, we just kind of like, hey, go get the book. We finish some of the worksheet. We don't finish it in time because we didn't have the book for like half the class. Our teacher comes to get us and sure enough, the librarian just starts laying into it her about how we're so misbehaved and it's the worst and she's never seen a mi more misbehaved class in her entire time as a librarian blah 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 and i don't know why she's so mad at our teacher because we had only been in this lady's class for like a week at this point you know it was just one of those things like not even a week a couple days even if we were the worst behaved class of all time it's not like she's really had enough time with us as a class to actually change our behavior it's been a few days everyone knows that like the first two weeks of school don't really count in terms of uh, teachers controlling classes and whatnot but whatever our teacher kind of takes this reaming out we get back to the class and obviously our teacher is not too happy with us so we start getting yelled at and she says that we have to write like a page paper about how we're supposed to behave in the library and if it ever happens again we'll be really sorry da 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 and at this point everyone's too scared to speak up and say something because everyone who had tried to say something in the library had just been shut down by the librarian so hard that everyone just kind of starts doing the worksheet because like eh, okay man i guess we're just kind of gonna get it done because last time we tried to speak up and say that this was unfair we got a book thrown on the ground and screamed at so we're doing the the thing and everyone's writing like i will not talk in the library I won't stab books with pencils like I don't know trying to fill out the papers and we finally get it done and we turn them in and our teachers like thank you and it's about a week till we go to the library again and uh, we spend like the next few class days pretty normal everything's fine. And I think our teacher kind of started to realize that something was a little bit off about the librarian saying that we were the worst behaved class. Because every other day when we're going to like art class, we're going to music class, we're going to PE, we're going to whatever it may be. None of them are saying that we're misbehaved. If anything, they were like, yeah, they were a great class. I really appreciate it. So our teacher didn't come out and say, like, what happened at the library. I think she's lying. But she started asking some of the more trustworthy students in the class, hey, did anything happen in the library and whatnot? And uh, a few of them had said that, like, this librarian's just really mean. And I don't know if the other teachers had started talking or what. But it just became very apparent that like the librarian was not very popular because you would be walking in the hallways and you would walk past a class that was going to the library and they would just have the biggest frowns on their face, bro. It just looked like they were going to jail or something. And the teachers never looked too thrilled either. And at first, for like the first couple days, the first week of school, whenever a kid's or a class would have like the library special that day, they would be in trouble because they would say that they were the worst behaved class ever, da 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 da. And it didn't seem like the reports were stopping, but it seemed like the teachers didn't care. Like whenever someone would have library the day before, we knew that they would get reamed out for being the worst behaved class ever because the librarian was nuts. But the next day, instead of like not having recess or being punished by their teacher, everything was normal. Which is how you know even the teachers at this point were starting to be like, all right, she just thinks every student is the worst behaved student of all time. Which, listen, I'm not saying everyone's cut out to be a teacher. That's totally okay. If you don't want to be a teacher, you are more than welcome to not be a teacher. 
I've just never understood the types of people that 100% like hate kids. They think every class is the worst behaved class ever. They just think kids are the dumbest people to ever exist. But then they're insistent on being a teacher. Like, why would you want to be surrounded by something you hate every single day? I don't understand. Like, if I really hated video games, computers, and talking, this would be a terrible job. It would be dumb to surround myself with stuff I don't like. So if you hate people asking you questions, maybe don't be an elementary school librarian because elementary school kids probably ask questions more than like any other grade set, whatever it's called. And on top of it, just being a librarian when you don't like being asked questions seems really stupid. Even if you're just a librarian in a public library, do you just think no one is ever going to come up to you and go, hey, can you help me find this book? Oh no, that's never going to happen. Nope. I don't know if there's a librarian school, but I feel like most of it would be organization, and then the other half would be like helping people find books and reading. I, I don't know. But it all culminated, I was not there, but we knew it all culminated one day with an older class. I think it was a fifth grade class. And apparently this class had really, really not liked the librarian, and they actually were a little bit more misbehaved. The teacher that they had was known for kind of being one of those teachers that's like, do what you want to the point where it's a little bit of a problem. Like if a kid didn't want to go to a class or whatever, they just wouldn't go and the teacher would be like, that's your right. Sometimes teachers got to be in control, but whatever. I guess they had been in the library and something had happened where they had started arguing back and forth with the library. And no surprise, because this lady treated arguing like it was an Olympic sport, man. You would have thought that life itself for her boiled down to being able to yell at people and argue with them. But uh, I guess the entire class had kind of started arguing with her. It had kind of become like a, a, an 18 on 1 situation because the whole class was just like, this is stupid, we don't want to be here, blah 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 blah. And instead of calling another teacher, calling the office or something, maybe like getting control of the classroom, I guess the librarian had decided in her infinite wisdom that the number one way to start controlling a class that's getting out of control and not listening isn't anything that makes sense. It's going and finding a book and throwing it at people in the class. And listen, it's never okay if you're a teacher to throw a book at a student. We all agree that like if a teacher throws a book at someone, ah, uh, you really can't be a teacher anymore. But what's wilder is it's not like she was pissed off, picked up the book, threw it, and immediately went, oh, I shouldn't have done that, I'm so sorry. She had thrown four books at four different students throughout the course of the argument. And the only reason they had known is because two of them had gotten hit by the books and gotten bruises. And obviously, they tell their teacher, the teacher tells the administration, the administration launches this huge investigation, the librarian's on leave, they have like this substitute librarian come in, and for the next two months, they're kind of investigating it. And the entire time, it's just kind of the talk of the school. And it was so funny, the teachers were kind of trying to control people talking about it. Like, whenever it first happened, and people would be talking about it, the teachers would be like, that didn't happen. But as time went on, it got more and more futile. To the point where, like, we would be talking about it in class, and the teacher would be like, I don't even want to know what you're talking about, type of vibe. Like, I'm just not going to pay attention. But sure enough, after about two months, they announced that our librarian was just not going to come back, which was not surprising. You throw four books at students, it's just done. And on top of that, you throw four books at students after you've already been reassigned to a different school for being insanely difficult to work with. What would you like the school district to do at that point? Like, listen, I know that you literally cause problems everywhere you go, but we're going to try to figure it out some more. I feel like at a certain point, you just got to cut your losses and move on. Also, how bonkers, man. Imagine you're just in the library trying to do your thing. You start getting screamed at. You're annoyed that you're getting screamed at. So you start arguing back. Next thing you know, the librarian, the person who's supposed to be like quiet all the time, calm, some old lady starts flinging Harry Potter books at you, bro. Oh no, the prisoner of Azkaban hit me in the forehead. Also, what did she think, dude? They're already mad at you. They're already saying they don't like you. Did you think pelting books at them was gonna make them reevaluate? Wow, now that I have been hit in the head with a book and gotten a traumatic brain injury, I can certainly say that we're in the wrong and we should just do everything this librarian says. In fact, we should build monuments to her. Forget Mount Rushmore. We need to find another mountain and create a carving of this librarian's face above an entire mountain 
carved out of books as well. It will take up to 300 years to do it, but I think if we create a cult, it should be able to get done. No, they're gonna hate you even more because now you're throwing books at them. Not once has anyone ever thrown something at me to like try to hurt me and I've gone, oh, that guy, that guy's awesome. What a swell dude. I loved when he tried to hit me in the face with a baseball. Either way, I, it's probably not very nice, but our school kind of had like a, a different air around it after that. People just seemed a lot happier. Not that they were happy she got fired. I mean, she did deserve it. You throw a book at a kid's head as a librarian, you gotta go. But more just because, like, I'm not even kidding, man. Whenever the library day was coming up, bro, everyone was just so bummed out because they just knew it was gonna suck. The amount of people getting in trouble... I'm sure the teachers got tired of it. Imagine every time you go to get your, like, class, you just get yelled at. Oh, your, your class is the worst thing I've ever seen. Everyone just felt a lot better without that librarian. And as for the replacement, I'm not saying the replacement was some, like, insane, awesome librarian as cool as the original one we had. But it was just like a normal librarian. The library didn't feel like a prison anymore. They had to keep the walls gray because, you know, schools don't have a lot of money. But there were a lot more posters. I didn't feel like every time I went to the library, I was about to get, like, waterboarded at Guantanamo Bay. And, uh, it was fine. I was only there for, like, two more years anyways. So, uh, the replacement librarian was solid. I think they actually still work there. I only know that because my grandma still has people that she worked with that still work there, and she gets updates. And you know grandma's, man. She's always, like, updating me. I'm like, grandma, I haven't been to that elementary school in, like, 20 years. I don't really care who's teaching there anymore. And she's like, do you remember Mr. Poopy Pants? And I'm like, no, I don't. Well, he retired. Well, good, good for Mr. Poopy Pants. I don't remember him, but good for him. All right, so the first story time I have for y'all today was sent in to me about this guy's teacher and another teacher at their school who was low-key encouraging members of their classes to beat each other up because they didn't like each other. I think every school has the one teacher that's a little bit younger than the other teachers, kind of considered the cool teacher. And at this particular school, there were two guys that kind of fit that. And you would think that they would embrace that and be bros and just be like, we're the cool teachers, this is awesome. But apparently they really did not like each other just because they were so similar. And you would think that also being an adult who's like been to college and whatnot, that at this point, considering they're literally teachers, they could just act professional while they were at school. And for a while they did, but then they started getting weirdly competitive with each other. For example, whenever there was a unit test, they both taught the same subject. They would write the average score of all their classes up on the board and the other one. And if they lost, like if the other class got better scores, the teacher would go off on the students about how they were being stupid and it was going to cost him his reputation and they really had to step it up. It was just getting way over the top. It's one thing to be competitive, but like if your class gets lower, grades than the other class. Calling them morons and getting actually upset because it made your enemy look better is ridiculous. That means that you're not doing a very good job teaching if they're not passing the test. It doesn't have anything to do with them wanting to make you look bad. But it all culminated when one day they were just kind of sitting in class writing something so it's a quiet day, not a lot of whole people talking. You know those days. All right, guys, we're just going to be working on the project. Go ahead and get writing. You're like, all right, just going to be a, a standard boring day. And out of nowhere, his teacher gets up and starts talking about how he really doesn't like the other teacher who's around his age. Da 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 da. And everyone in the class was already aware that these guys didn't get along, so they weren't shocked by what he was saying, but it was a little bit more of like, why is he saying this right now? Like, we're in the middle of class working on stuff. And then he starts talking about how, like, this class in particular has the lowest grade point average of his classes, so he knows there's probably a few people in here that are willing to do a lot for some extra credit. I don't know if that's, like, a really weird way of looking at stuff. Oh, I'm gonna offer this class extra credit to do something nuts because they have the lowest grade seems kind of more evil villain than teacher but whatever and then he just goes full mask off with the evil villain thing and says that if anyone can beat up a member of the other teacher's class that he's going to go ahead and give them extra credit and that's just trying to hire a bounty hunter bro that's the equivalent of saying there's fifty thousand dollars if you capture this guy and return him like what in the patty mayo do you want to be going on in your class actively encouraging people to run up and beat up other students just because they're in a different class. I don't think you get to pick your teacher. It's not like everybody here had decided to join the other teacher's class instead of this guy's. And even if that was the case, they shouldn't get beat up because they don't want you to be their teacher. That's just nuts. 
and no one really hopped on board right away believe it or not people weren't chomping at the bit to get like one percent extra credit to get suspended for multiple days over something they don't care about so he started saying that he knew that their teacher was doing something similar and was going to be offering his class extra credit to beat them up as well which meant that these two teachers had gotten together, had an argument, and then both agreed that, like, sending the students after each other would be the best way to handle this situation. But at that point, the class starts getting upset because now they're imagining that they're going to be hunted by the other class, so people start being like, well, if they're gonna hunt us, then we gotta hunt them first. Which is probably exactly what this teacher's plan was, was to just scare everyone so that way they wanted to do what he wanted. But one of the goody two-shoes in the class, like the usual teacher's pet, who normally would support anything the teacher said, just kind of stood up and walked out of class. And walking out of class in this class was pretty normal, they could just go to the bathroom whenever. And so the teacher just thought that the goody two-shoes was leaving to go to the bathroom. But about 15 minutes later, thankfully, usually in these situations, snitching is bad. He comes back with a bunch of administrators and they start asking the teacher about if he offered extra credit for them to beat up other students. And listen, I'm glad that the guy ended up getting caught, but sometimes it's surprising that people admit things really quickly, you know? Like, he probably should have denied that. Especially when the administration comes back and starts asking questions, it's best to just shut your mouth. But he starts going off about how it's going to be good for the kids because they're going to understand how, like, to use motivation to make things happen in their workplace for their bosses and get more promotions. And I've heard a lot of stupid things try to be explained, but it's next level stupid to try to explain to a principal that you have to have a fight club going on to make them better in the future. I don't know, I think brain damage doesn't help people get better jobs, but whatever, man. And the administrator at that point was like, yeah, that's gonna be a no-no. We're launching an investigation. And both teachers ended up losing their job over this petty crap. How do you think that call went with their parents, man? Hey, mom, I gotta move back home. I lost my job because I was trying to start a secret after-school fight club. So this one's a little bit shorter, but I think it's probably one of the funniest ones in here. I think it's really funny when people hype up their own skills about something that no one was like trying to hype them up on when they really can't back it up. Obviously, I'm a big fan of talking trash. It's what like a majority of my YouTube career at its peak was based around. Talking garbage is a fun pastime. If you're good at talking crap, I can respect it. The one caveat is you have to be able to back up the trash you're talking. There's a reason that I'm not walking around like I'm gonna knock out every YouTuber in my way because I'm just not. Like I'm just not gonna do that, you know, so that would be ridiculous ridiculous because one day someone's gonna knock me out and it's not gonna be pretty. But I guess the person in this story time just never got the memo. This guy and his friends were at lunch one day and they were just talking about Valorant because it's the game that they play the most and they were just saying that like, oh, they're about to hit a new rank, da 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 da, just kind of that type of stuff, casually talking to your friends as you do. And this kid that they didn't know who sat at the table behind them was just obviously eavesdropping on the conversation. You know when someone's like trying to make it look like they're not eavesdropping but it's just obvious they are? And so they keep talking about it and eventually this kid like butts his way into the conversation. And they've never talked to this dude before, they've never hung out with him before, he just joins the conversation and immediately starts talking crap saying that he's 100% better than them at Valorant and he could carry them and trust if they just played with him then he could make sure they got their rank blah 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 he's basically gonna go pro he's he's already got a contract man they're paying him 80 million dollars a year to be Valoranting it up every single day and obviously no one had really questioned his skill no one had said he was bad so the fact that he just joined the conversation that he wasn't a part of and immediately started just dumpstering on everyone was weird and no one in the group was enthusiastic about it. It wasn't like they're sitting there, I can't wait to hang out with this guy. The first thing he ever did was insult me for literally no reason when I don't even know the guy. It'll be really fun to hang out with him. It's one thing to like insult your boys back and forth because you know each other, you understand the dynamic, but a stranger doing it is just weird. But whatever, he manages to convince someone in the group to add him because they're like, well, if he's as good as he says he is, then I'll still play with him because he'll carry us. And that's why I did that explanation at the start of this. If you're gonna go and just join conversations talking crap about how good people are at something and then play with them, you better be good. And this kid joins their little group and sees that they're like gold rank, but about to get upgraded to diamond, I think, after that. I'm not 100%. 
Either way, he's like, oh, you guys aren't even diamond yet. Trust me, I've been diamond for a while, blah, blah, blah. And he does have the diamond rank. But here's the thing about Valorant. Um, yes, yes, he very, 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 very possibly could have earned it himself. But he also could have just played with people that are way better than him and paid them to carry him and, and boost himself. So whatever, they get into the game. He instant locks Reyna, which if you play Valorant, is just like a, another way of just saying, I'm really good, I'm gonna carry every. And they get into the game, and they're expecting this dude to just go off. Drop in 20 kills before halftime, just being able to carry everyone in his backpack. His Jansport is heavy rated. And instead, this kid proceeds to drop a donut. Zero kills. But how many deaths would you say he has? A game of Valorant, even if it goes all the way to overtime or, or the very last round is what, like 24, 25 rounds? This guy managed to go 0 in 27 and they lost. Do you know how bad you have to be to go 0 in 27? I feel like if, if I put my grandma on Valorant and just said, sit here and when you see something, click the button. Even she would manage to get one or two kills completely based on luck and timing. To go 0 in 27 is impressive levels of bad. Like there's bad and then there's managing to go almost 0 in 30 in a video game. And if you're going to go 0-30, I'm not going to usually give you crap for it. You're probably new to the game. You probably have never played before. But when you're talking crap to everyone in this group about how garbage they are and they need you to carry them and da-da-da-da-da, you better hop in this match and play like an absolute pro. But no, instead he hopped in here and just went full, like, rookie level bot. That's insulting to bots, actually. I think a bot probably could have gotten more kills than 0-27. Moral of the story, though, if you can't back up all the trash you're going to talk, just don't talk it. But goodness gracious, how embarrassing. They didn't play with him after that, and he never, like, eavesdropped or joined a conversation. Probably for the best. I don't know how you could show your face after that display. It's just a video game at the end of the day, but the display of talking all that crap about them saying they were garbage and then being that bad, ugh. And to make matters even worse throughout the game, he kept blaming everything but himself, you know? Like, yes, everyone gets some lag sometimes. Every now and then you get some bad luck, crappy timing. They're running and they get a headshot. But this guy would blame literally anything, man. Oh, dude, it's Aquarius rising, so therefore I'm not going to play as well. You know, my horoscope said my aim's going to be a little off. Oh, man, I'm pretty sure my mom's cooking food, and whenever she cooks, the scent distracts the router because it just really wants to eat and my connection gets worse. Like, that type of stuff. Just excuses that make no sense. Uh, and listen, man, there's excuses, but 0-27 is a little bit beyond excuses. You're just kind of bad at the game if you manage to play that horribly. All right, this one is from some people that uh, went to a skate park and were supposed to have a pretty chill experience and when they got there they thought it was going to be a good day because there was just a mom and her kid on a scooter but they were over in this like smaller section they had a smaller street section and they wanted to skate in the like bull vert area so they go over there and they start skating and like I said they're expecting it to be a great time but they get a little bored of that after about 30 minutes so they go over to the larger street area and now they're about 50 feet away from this mom and her kid, and he's just riding around on the scooter. He's not snaking them. They're literally not even interacting. And they're not playing music or anything. They're literally just skating and talking to each other whenever someone needs advice on how to land a trick or something. And the reality of a skate park and skateboarding in general is if you want to, like, pop the board up and do a trick, you have to kind of crack the board against the ground. That's, like, not a great way to describe it, but if you've ever seen someone do a skate trick, they pop the tail. Popping gets the better word. You pop the tail against the ground, and when you pop wood against concrete, there tends to be a little bit of a noise. And it kind of sounds like a crack, just like but louder than that. It's definitely not deafening. It's not going to hurt your ears. It's not going to give you hearing damage. It's just the reality of what happens when you make skateboard go off ground. It just is what it is. And so every time they would do a trick, there's that popping noise because that's what happens. And if you're going to be at a skate park, you just kind of have to accept you're going to hear it. You're also going to hear bikes going by. You're going to hear people talking. You just have to accept it when you're at a public place focused on skateboarding. But this mom apparently just did not like that popping noise because she comes over to them like hands on her hips looking all angry. And they're confused on what she's angry about. So they ask if she's okay. 
and she asks if they always have to be this disruptive and rude and inconsiderate of others and they're both standing there very confused because they literally haven't said anything to her they even made sure that they weren't swearing when they were talking about their trick because they just didn't want to swear around the kid like they were going above and beyond to make sure that there were no issues so when this lady comes over and starts yelling at them they're really confused and they don't know what she's talking about when she's accusing them of making a ruckus and being inconsiderate because they've just been skating. They're not riding around and hitting everyone with the oh yeah, like it's just not going on. There's no reason for you to be angry or feel like it's some overwhelming noise. So they ask her, what are you talking about? Like what noise is, is bugging you? And she starts going off about how every 25 seconds they're smacking their skateboards against the ground and they're obviously doing it to try to make her and her son uncomfortable so they leave so they can do their drugs. And they just start laughing because like A, they're not going to do their drugs and B, like they're not smacking the skateboard against the ground to scare them. And they start trying to explain to the lady that they're not smacking it on the ground, they're doing it as a part of the trick because that's how you get the board to go up into the air, you have to do this and that. And she's just having none of it. This explanation makes no sense to her. And she starts saying that she went to school and took a physics class. So she knows that that's not how skateboards work. Everyone knows that you jump to get it in the air. And if you did take a physics class and you think that's how it works, then I think you need to go back and take it again and repeat it or maybe fight the teacher. Because just imagine if that how it works, like you're just on a skateboard and you jump and it just floats off. Gravity's defied. Gravity's not real. Nope, you don't have to, to force it to come off the ground. In fact, that's why you have to keep your handy dandy skateboard strap tied to it and around your wrist so that way when you jump off and it starts floating away, you can catch it. Like, what are you on, man? You think that that's how skateboarding works, that you just jump? And listen, if you don't know how skateboarding works, I'm not going to be mad at you. It's not something everyone understands. But to be angry and correcting people who own skateboards when you don't know how it works is a very brave move. Imagine if you had never seen a car before. You've never driven a car. You, you've never even played a video game where you drive a car. And you're out there on the road with a taxi driver who drives for his job and you just start yelling at him that he's wrong and he doesn't need to touch the steering wheel. He just has to think about turning. Like, what are you talking about? Anyways, they're laughing, just saying that that's not how it works. And if she took a physics class, then she would know that's not how it works. And anyways, they're just going back and forth. And finally, she like folds her arms and says, well, one of us has to leave. It's going to be us or you. And they just look at her and said, we're going to go back to the bowl. We'd really like you guys to stay, but we're not leaving. So they went back to the bowl and started skating. But sure enough, she packs up her kid on the scooter who doesn't want to leave. He's like, mom, I don't want to go. And she's like, well, they're being rude. Keep in mind, they didn't start this argument. They literally like walked away even after all this stupid explanation. But here she is trying to convince her kid that skateboarders are evil and are kicking him out of the skate park. I don't know, man. I feel like there are certain things that would just be obvious. And even if you had never been to the skate park, you would look at it and go, oh, the pop's happening every time they do a trick. It must be something involved in that. Nope. Instead, just rage, scream at them, uh, defy gravity, apparently, all that stuff. Perfectly normal reaction to some people at the skate park. All right, so this next one's like a, a little scary. I mean, they still sent it to me and said I could tell it. So obviously they were cool enough to like let that happen. But this one's pretty nuts. So the person who sent this into me is pretty new to driving. And when you're new to driving, chances are you're going to make some mistakes. You're not going to be perfect all the time. You're brand new at it. Hopefully you're not as bad as that other guy was at Valorant at driving and crashing into everything. But like if you accidentally cut someone off once or twice, it's not cool, but you're brand new on the road. Things can happen. Like it's just a reality. So whatever. One day he's in a lane and he realizes that that lane is ending. So he has to get over and he, because he's never been in the situation before, he just kind of panics a bit and he gets over and he doesn't get hit by the car behind him. But he definitely could have given it more room. And he admits that straight up. And he tried to do like a wave behind him. Like, sorry. He didn't flip him off. He just kind of does a wave. And he instantly sees that the guy who's behind him is pissed. He can like see him screaming over his steering wheel. He keeps pointing at the car and then like making threatening gestures. And so he kind of tries to speed up and get back over to let the guy pass. But the guy instead just stays behind him, gets over in his lane, and he now realizes that the dude is straight up road raging on him. And road rage is very scary because, like, listen, I feel like it's dumb to just chase somebody and get mad at their car. Even if they did something stupid, it's just not a safe situation for you to be chasing them either. 
But if someone's already illogical enough to just commit to road rage on you, who knows what they're going to do in order to, like, teach you a lesson about driving down here. So whatever, he starts trying to just, like, calmly drive away, and the guy's still screaming. Every time he looks in his rear view, he sees the guy screaming. And unfortunately for the person in the story, he sees a red light coming up. And in case you missed this lesson in like first grade, green, go, yellow, slow. Red means stop. So he starts slowing down, and I don't know if this guy's already road raging and just nuts, if it's roid rage too or whatever, but he starts thinking that the kid's brake checking it. So he starts screaming even more, and he's literally spitting from his mouth, and the spit is so big that this guy can see him spitting from the rearview mirror in his car. But he finally comes to the stop at the red light, and he's just hoping that this guy just continues to scream in his car, just keep yelling over there, man, no reason to get out. But sure enough, as soon as they come to a stop, the guy hops out of his car and starts walking up to his window. And so the subscriber who sent this to me does the smart thing and just keeps looking forward. He's not going to roll down the window. He's not going to interact. He's not even going to look over. And the guy walks up to the window just screaming about how he's an idiot driver and he could have hurt him and what a moron. He's lucky he doesn't drag him out of the car and beat him right now. He was making unsafe conditions on the road. And yes, the person did admit they, they panicked a little bit. They should have given him more room. He will never do it again. But I don't think that you're making the road conditions any more safe by basically putting it into a high-speed chase, chasing this kid down and then getting out of the car and threatening him. It's a little bit absurd to be like, you're not being considerate of others on the road while you're road raging and screaming. But obviously the kid's just not reacting. He's not looking, he's just looking straight forward. So the guy walks around to the front of the car to try to stand in front of him and the kid looks to the right. He's just avoiding making eye contact. And now the guy is like pounding on the hood, screaming over and over, look at me, look at me, look at me. And his voice kept cracking while he was doing it, so it was just not very threatening, and the guy just wouldn't look at him. And finally, the light turns green, and he just, like, drives around the guy. He had tried to come back to the driver's side door, and as soon as he did that, he just kind of turned around him and kept driving. And by the time the guy got back into his car and had continued to go, he had basically caused the ginormous traffic jam, and everyone was honking at him. So yeah, all those unsafe road conditions, this guy is the reason that you have traffic out of nowhere on some random road, because he decided to try to hop out and fight someone because they were making an unsafe condition, and that makes things even safer. I just don't really understand the logic here. Like, road rage is just dumb. Don't do it. Don't get mad at strangers on the road and, like, follow them and try to fight them. That's psychotic. And obviously, don't cut people off either. Like, this person did not mean to. I, it was genuinely an accident. And also, be understanding if it does happen to you that, like, it might just be an accident. All right, so uh, this next one is about this subscriber's little brother. His little brother is a pretty entitled kid, just kind of expects everything to be handed to him, expects his parents to take care of everything, buy everything for him, and he's at the age where that's just, like, kind of not cool anymore. He's, he's into his late teenage years. And I don't even mean like 16, 17, I mean like 18, 19. And whatever, for his 16th birthday, his parents had got him this like entire gaming setup and it was really, really nice, but obviously, 16 to 19, three years, technology changes a little bit, and none of it was outdated, it all still worked perfectly fine, there was no reason to get anything new. It just wasn't the newest, shiniest thing, and it really bugged this kid that he didn't have the newest, shiniest version of literally everything all the time. So one day, he calls his brother, and he's like, Hey man, my birthday's coming up, I really want this monitor, will you get it for me? And he said, link it to me and I'll let you know. And he links it to him, and I don't know, I would say, like, a, a nice gaming monitor, like a really nice one, top of the line, probably about 400 bucks, and we're talking, like, 240 hertz, 4K, it, it, a good monitor. And they can be more than that, I've seen, like, up to 800, you know, but, eh. Three, four hundred bucks will get you a really nice monitor. And I think even like 200, 250 could get you what you need, probably. But this guy clicks this link and his brother is asking him to buy like a $900 monitor. And obviously, he loves his brother, but $900 is a lot to spend on a birthday gift for anyone. And that's like a chunk of change, man. That, that's a solid contribution to the good old IRA, man. 
the, the Roth IRA, his 401k, whatever it is. He, he could get a juicy retirement contribution for 900 bucks. It'd be weird to just buy you a monitor randomly. And it's not your parents. It's not like he has to. And your parents don't have to either. But you get what I'm saying. I feel like that's a gift you ask your parents for. And they go, no. But whatever. He says that he's not going to buy it. And his brother kind of starts throwing a fit on the phone saying that, like, he really needs a new monitor. And he's so uh, upset that no one wants to buy him a new one. And he asks him, like, well, what's wrong with your old one? And he says, nothing. It's just 144 hertz, and I want a 240 hertz monitor. Which, for those of you that don't know, that's just how fast, like, your your frames per second get displayed. And 144 is still fast. Like, it, it's a good monitor. There's no reason to be upset with that. And so his brother tells him that, like, well, until that monitor breaks, there's just really no reason for you to get a new one. And he thought that that would come off to his brother of, like, you have to be responsible. You don't want to buy things that you already have because you can just use it till it breaks that's the more responsible way of owning things you don't buy a replacement for something that's working fine and is still good I can understand wanting to replace a computer from 2011 but I don't know three years isn't a long enough time where I feel like your monitor is gonna be so used that it's just crappy the monitor I'm in front of right now, I think, is probably like six years old, to be honest. So I just don't really understand where he was coming from. And you would think his brother would take it that way. But instead, it was almost like his brother was listening to this advice, like a tutorial for how to guilt trip his parents into buying him one. And instead of asking for clarification, just decides that, well, if my monitor has to be broken for me to get a new one, then I'll break my monitor. Which is stupid for multiple reasons. One... If you get the new monitor and you still have the old one, now you have two monitors. And you know what's a lot cooler than one brand new monitor? Double monitors, that's for sure. And on top of it, like, even if you don't want this old monitor, wouldn't you rather sell it and get some money out of it? And your parents are not going to be thrilled that you're breaking technology to make them buy you a new one. I think any parent would be like, yeah, I'm just not going to buy you a new one. But whatever, that night he went to the garage, grabbed his dad's hammer, went absolutely bonkers on his monitor, just destroys it, and then had gone to his parents and said that like he couldn't get his homework done because his monitor broke. And tried to tell his parents that he didn't know how it broke. Keep in mind, it's like just destroyed. So very quickly, his parents pieced together that he had taken a hammer to break it. And they're like, we're not going to get you a new one. Why did you do that? That was insanely stupid. And he starts freaking out saying that he doesn't have a monitor now. And he doesn't understand why they hate him and won't buy him a new one. And they didn't back down. They were like, we're not going to buy you a new one because you broke your old one. Why did you do that? We didn't even tell you you were getting a new one. So he calls his brother all pissed off because now he can't play video games. And his brother's like, well, why did you destroy your monitor? And he tries to blame his brother and say, because he told him to. And his brother is like, you're not going to put that on me, bro. I did not tell you to break your monitor. I said there's no reason to get a new one until it's broken. And he's like, yeah, so I broke it. Well, that's not on me, man. If you decide to take what I say and do the stupidest possible application, that's not on me. That's very evidently not what I was saying was go break it with a hammer. I think that would be some bad brotherly advice. And even then, just because your friends gave you the advice, you have to follow it. Hey, man, you should just uh, go out there, right? Slam your foot on the gas in your car and then just slam your foot on the brake at the exact same time. And just hold it until the car breaks. And you're like, that's a good idea. That's advice. So I'm going to go do it. I, I don't know. I don't know. If someone said, go break your monitor, I just wouldn't do it because I don't want to break my monitor. So whatever. To this day, he doesn't have a monitor and he also doesn't have a job. So he just refuses to like do anything to fix his situation other than just complain at everyone about how, you know, they obviously hate him because they don't want to buy him a new monitor. Why would you not want to buy something new for the person that broke the old version? Ugh. Who Who could ever think of why? So this last one's definitely out there, and I, I don't even understand what this person's thought process possibly could have been, but it also sounds like they probably weren't having a normal thought process if you're picking up what I'm putting down. So uh, this guy lives in a neighborhood that isn't necessarily the greatest neighborhood of all time. It's not like he's living in a war zone or anything, but like it, there's some characters in his neighborhood that are, are known for making decisions that you wouldn't necessarily call great decisions. 
And one of them in particular is the guy across the street who's just, it's like a miracle that he's managed to live as long as he had just because the choices he makes are so stupid. Anyways, it's about three in the morning and the person who sent this to me gets awoken by a ginormous crash. It just sounds like something smacked into uh, one of the houses almost. And so he starts looking around, he realizes it didn't come to, from his house, so he looks out the window and he sees the neighbor across the street, you know, so dumb it's a miracle to be alive. And what he sees is that where there used to be a garage door, there's now just brake lights. And it looks like somehow he has managed to crash into his own garage door. And so the guy goes outside and starts being like, do you need help? Do you need help? He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know how hard this guy just crashed into his own garage door. And so as he starts going across the street, he sees the driver door fly open and the guy just take off running. And listen, I don't know, maybe he was afraid of, of getting caught or whatever, but the only issue is he crashed into his own house in his car. So even if you were to run away, I think it would be pretty obvious to everybody that, like, you were responsible for this. What is the excuse going to be? Oh no, my car got stolen, but they were just the very considerate type of car thief. So after they did their joyriding and stuff, they brought it back so I wouldn't have to, you know, find a way to work tomorrow. The most considerate car thieves of all time, like let's be honest here, it was you who was driving your car when you crashed into your house. So whatever, the subscriber goes back inside because a bunch of other neighbors had come outside and they were calling everyone. And when all of the emergency response people got there, he went back outside because he was the first person out there. So they're kind of taking his statement. And he doesn't tell them that he saw the neighbor get out of the car, but he says, I saw someone get out of the car and run away. And as he's explaining this, the neighbor comes back. And when he comes back around, it's obvious that he was in a car crash because like, not any insane injury, but you can just tell he's pretty shook up. And he walks up to the guy as he's doing the interview and asks the person who's interviewing him like, oh, what happened here? Who crashed into my house with my car? And they're kind of like, uh, you seem extremely calm for someone who apparently had their car stolen and crashed into their house. And he's like, yeah, well, I'm just honestly glad to have the car back. And they're like, well, why didn't you report it stolen? And it's it's very obvious to everyone that this is a very dumb attempt at, like, trying to get out of trouble for whatever had happened. And he's like, no, I don't know. Someone must have stolen my car. And at that point, the, the subscriber is like, can I go inside? And they said yes. So he leaves. And as he's leaving, he's just hearing this guy try to explain that he was not responsible for crashing the car, that it had simply been stolen and they must have tried to bring it back to the registered address, which was in the glove box. And I love that he expected them to believe this, bro. Like, seriously, man, imagine this considerate of a thief. They're totally cool with breaking into people's stuff and taking it, right? Like, they're, they're fine with that. That doesn't cross their moral compass. But they're not gonna not return the stolen property, okay? That's just really funny. Anyways, uh, obviously he, he got caught pretty quick. I don't know if he really got in trouble for it because it was his car in his house, but a pretty dumb idea. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrubby here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am and uh, like I said in the intro, we're gonna open up with a dog getting stolen. Here is yesterday's comment of the day. Thank you so much and with that out of the way, don't steal people's dogs. I didn't know I had to come out here and make it a disclaimer, but I definitely do apparently. So the person that sent this in to me had just adopted a rescue dog from the pound and it was still young, not like fully grown yet, but not like a little tiny cute baby puppy. It was still a cute baby puppy, but you get what I'm saying. There's like a tiny little tiny baby puppy and then a puppy. And they had a puppy and it was very cute and a lot of people in the apartment complex had gotten very envious. But there was this particular lady who had gotten a little bit obsessed with this subscriber's dog. And had started asking when they were going to take it on walks so she could come see it and, you know, if she could have some time walking it alone. Just weird questions. You're not allowed to walk someone's dog alone if you don't know them. That's super weird. Like, if the guy who lives five doors down that I don't know at all started asking to walk my dog, I'd be very confused as to why he's doing that. Anyways, one day the subscriber's at work and they come home to their front door kicked in. Like somebody had taken the boot to it, kicked off the front door's lock right in and had uh, taken the dog. So they call the police and report it and obviously the police come out and they're investigating what had happened to this apartment because it's a pretty serious break-in. 
the front door lock is broken. Like, they kicked in the door. And as the police are there doing their little reporting thing, his neighbor lady that had been obsessed with his dog walks up to him and says, Oh my goodness, what happened? What did they take? Your dog? Which is a super weird thing to say if you don't know what they took. I feel like robbers aren't huge on taking dogs. So the fact that she walked up and immediately said, what did they take, your dog, made his eyebrows start to go up a little bit. But whatever, the police say they're going to look into it and they'll be on the lookout for the dog, but no promises because it's hard to recover stolen property, which sucks to hear, but whatever, I don't know. So he goes about his day and the next day he stays home from work because he's very distraught about his dog being stolen. I think anyone would be upset about that. That doesn't strike me as something that happens to you when you wake up the next morning. Oh well, these things happen, you know, you can always get another dog, it is what it is. Like, I hope that's not people's reaction to this stuff. So he goes and he's taking a walk and he sees the neighbor that's obsessed with his dog is walking a dog and she didn't have one, so that's weird. And what's even weirder is it looks like his dog. So he starts to get closer, and the dog that looks like his dog starts freaking out trying to pull to him very excitedly, as if a uh, dog that had missed its owner. And he realizes, that's my dog. So he goes over there, and she's just pretending not to see him, which is not a great way to get out of a confrontation. If I just pretend they don't exist and throw my head in the sand like an ostrich, none of it actually exists. Especially when you're stealing someone's dog, just ignoring them doesn't exist. Especially when the dog's trying to get to them because it misses their owner. So he starts confronting her, being like, why did you take my dog, let go of my dog, let go of my dog? And he goes up and unclips the dog from the harness. And the lady looks and sees that the dog has been unclipped from the harness, looks back at him, looks back at the dog, looks back at him, does a triple take, and says, whatever, you can have it, and just walks away. Probably because she realized if she tried to put up a fight or, like, claim that she had bought it from somebody, the guy was just going to report her and she would have been screwed. How did you come into possession of the dog? Oh, I don't know. The guy was very excited to have his dog back, so he immediately takes the dog home. It was okay. It didn't look like it was mistreated or, like, uh, treated poorly in any way. But he calls up the police department and lets him know that his neighbor had taken the dog. And instead of coming to investigate, they're like, great, you got your dog back. I don't know where this guy lives, but wherever it is, I'm not trying to live there. Because that seems like a weird reaction. Oh, that break in that happened? You figured out who did it? Great. Glad you got your dog back. I mean, I guess they couldn't confirm she had done it, but the fact that this little old lady had become so obsessed with this dude's dog, she was willing to go kick in the door like an FBI response team... Goodness gracious, bro. Like, dog napping is nuts. I don't even know why you would want someone else's dog. The idea of ripping a dog away from its owner and then trying to make it love me just sounds like something only an anime villain would do. For real, for real. So the guy gets his dog back, and ever since, his neighbor has just been avoiding him and acting like he's the bad guy. Trying to convince people in the complex that he did a bunch of stuff and that's why she's avoiding him. And he's like, no, I didn't do anything. She stole my dog. And everyone in the complex is kind of on his side because it's not the first time she's had some sticky fingers. A bunch of people started telling him stories about how she's apparently notorious for stealing things from people. So uh, guard your dogs, apparently. Apartment complex, a house, you never know. Things are getting crazy in the year 2022. I just don't know why you would steal a dog. This lady deserves to be in a not nice place. Okay, this next one is just some bad parenting. Gen Z taking an enormous L. It seems like Gen Z just can't take a W. I'm a part of Gen Z, by the way. A lot of people got confused. Yes, I'm old Gen Z, a little bit of a boomer Gen Z, but I technically count. This guy had a little brother who was, like, insanely addicted to Xbox. I think everybody goes through that phase. At least I did. I I don't know if it's common. I Like, some boomers are probably listening to this, real boomers. I never played Xbox back in my day. Yeah, you were a kid in the 40s, dude. You were more worried about getting drafted for World War II than you were about a Modern Warfare 2 lobby. We get it. We appreciate everything you guys did, you know, but uh, times have changed. Anyways, this guy's little brother was a little bit too addicted to Xbox to the point where he would get really, really mad at video games. And I get raging. I'm not trying to say I've never gotten mad before. But if you ever start, like, actually crying, shaking of anger at a video game, it's time to just take a little bit of a break, go outside. 
What's that message that Nintendo Switch gives you if you're on it for like too long straight? Oh, go outside, take a break, you can do it. That's what kind of needs to happen, and that's how mad his brother would get. And so one day, everyone's having a normal night, it's like a school night, whatever, and his brother's playing Fortnite in the next room. And he's getting pretty loud, he's getting excited, but whatever, he's not gonna tell him to shut up or stop making noise, cause even back in the day when Fortnite was popping, if you're top three and you're trying to give callouts, you're gonna get hype, you're gonna get a little loud, and it is what it is. So he's listening to his brother, and his brother starts, like, frantically making callouts as if they're in a fight and they're not doing too hot. And listen, Fortnite is fun. I'm not trying to say Fortnite's not fun. I'm not trying to say that Fortnite is as fun as it was in 2018, though. So he didn't know why his brother was taking it so seriously and getting so upset, but it becomes clear that his team loses this little engagement because he starts screaming about how his team was trash and if they just did their jobs, then they wouldn't be in this situation every time they tried to do something in the game. And he couldn't believe he had to deal with teammates that were this brain dead, blah, blah, blah. Not very nice things. And then he hears things start getting thrown. He hears things being broken. And instead of just ending at things being thrown and things being broken, he hears what is like a bowl in a china shop, almost like someone took a mini wrecking ball like Miley Cyrus and started throwing it around the room. Whatever is going on in there, it sounds like not much is surviving. So he goes out into the hallway and his dad is coming up the stairs to go investigate because it's made such a racket that even he's like, what is going on? And they open the door in what used to be a really cool room with this like desk that was on the wall, set up all nice, very, very well attached to the wall, sick looking, is now just the ruins of it. It's pulled off the wall. The entire desk has been pulled off the wall. The drywalls come off with it. The other walls just have holes in the drywall everywhere. Almost like he took his fist and just went every four inches and kept punching. And his brother is standing there still screaming about how it's so bullcrap that his team wouldn't do what they had to do. And his dad is looking at this situation and imagine being in his shoes. Like this guy didn't grow up with video games and even if you did grow up with video games, this is nuts. You trashed a room. But you pay for this house. You're making the payment every month for this house. You open the door. Your kid has trashed everything, all the nice stuff you've given him, because he came in second place in the Fortnite game. So his dad starts yelling at him like, why would you do this? But his little brother turns to his dad and tells him to shut up because he won't understand, which was not a good idea. So his dad walks over, takes his Xbox, and just walks out of the room. He doesn't break it or anything, just takes it away. And his brother, the next day, goes to school and comes back to just his mattress on the floor and his parents explaining that he was going to be sleeping with just his mattress on the floor till he learned to respect things. No more Xbox, no more computer, no more staying up late playing Fortnite. And his brother was pissed and was talking about how it was so unfair. And I don't know if this is, like, really mean of me, but what do you expect, dude? You trash your entire room, and not just trash it. We're not talking about, like, yelling, punching a monitor. We're talking about knocking holes in the wall, serious repairs having to be made to your room, and you expect your parents to do absolutely nothing about it and keep letting you play Xbox like you were before? If you can play video games and get good grades and, like, have no problem and have a job, good for you, then keep on gaming. But the second you start, I don't know, destroying your house, being unable to function because of it, it's probably time to take a step back and stop doing what you're doing. I just thought that was nuts, though, especially in the year 2022. It would be nuts any year, but the fact he's still going this crazy for Fortnite this year goes to show he's way out of touch, too. You're not gonna go pro, buddy. I don't even think people are really playing Fortnite these days, other than the pro players and the people that enjoy the no-builds. So this next story that was sent in to me is from a guy that's in college. So he's staying in some apartments that like aren't the best quality. They're super near his campus, but his campus is old. So the apartments are old, which means he can basically hear his neighbors living their day-to-day -day life. Some guy gets in an argument with his wife. He gets a play-by-play. -play. Might as well be sitting live in like an episode of Dr. Phil or Maury, the way that this guy's just dealing with having to listen to these people live these dramatic lives. And the guy above him was just a party animal, almost like he didn't do anything but party. That was his only job, his only reason to exist. 
He didn't know what the guy actually did, but every night on the dot from like 8 p.m. to midnight, he would be insanely loud. And on weekends, it would be insanely loud till like 3, 4 a.m. This guy's trying to study, get ready for school and whatnot, and it's just too hard to like actually do anything with this person living above him. And any time he would go up to try to ask him to turn it down, no one would answer the door, even if there was very obviously a party going on on the other side. But whatever, one weekend he comes home on a Friday and sees this flyer in his door and it's the apartment above him passing out flyers saying that it was their birthday and they were throwing a super large party and everyone was invited and everyone should bring everyone that they could. And this just meant one thing to this guy was that his night was going to be absolutely miserable. And it just so happened that that weekend was a long weekend. So he starts calling up all of his friends trying to find something else to do so he doesn't have to be home that night. But like 99% of the school had gone back home for the weekend. So he was one of the only people left in town. So he's just kind of stuck with it. And sure enough, at 7 p.m., the music starts and the crowd just gets bigger and bigger. But eventually, the crowd would stop normally. Like, that's how parties normally go. You hit terminal velocity. It can't get any bigger. No one else fits in the apartment. But that doesn't happen. People just keep coming. They keep cramming more people in. And it gets to the point that, like, people are jumping to the music and he's seeing his floor kind of going up and down. So he goes outside and goes upstairs to complain. And this time he's not going to be turned away. Like, this isn't safe, obviously. If the floor is buckling, you can't keep dancing there. And he goes up there and people are, like, on the railing of the balcony to the apartment complex out the door. And he looks into the apartment and it's like a sardine can. People are shoulder to shoulder. It looks like if you uh, farted in there, no one would be able to escape if it smelled rancid. Would be a fantastic place for somebody to try a stink bomb. Like, no one can escape. Deal with the stench. Ah, ha ha ha. Either way, he walks in and starts being like, yo, where is the owner? Where is the owner? And the guy says, it's me. And he says, you got to get some people out of there because the floor in the apartment beneath you is starting to buckle. Like it's going to break. And the guy starts going on about how there's no way that could happen. That could never happen. Quit being ridiculous. Just enjoy the party. Why was he being such a buzzkill? And as they're having this discussion outside the apartment on this railing, the living room in the apartment where everyone was dancing and jumping goes down and it just goes and there's a bunch of screaming. Everyone's going crazy. Ah, the world's gonna end. We're all gonna die. The floor collapsed. And the guy looks back at him and says, well, I guess I should have got some people out of there, huh? My bad. As if that's all it's going to be, bro. You just collapse the floor onto this other dude's living room and you think saying, oops, my bad is going to cover it. And he says, like, I'm going to contact the landlord. And he starts trying to convince him that he shouldn't contact the landlord and he wouldn't be being a cool neighbor if he did that. Yeah, you know what else isn't cool? Throwing a party so big that the floor literally collapses. What if he would have still been on his couch when like 40 people plummeted through the floor? I don't know, man. He might have been leaving in something other than a stretcher, more like a hearse. Like, that that can't be good for you. So he says, look, I've got no choice. Plus, we need to get this fixed. I can't live there if I don't have a roof above me and you don't have a floor. Like, how is that going to work? So he calls the landlord and tells him, and the landlord finds out and is immediately super apologetic and starts explaining that this guy has had problems before and that he was going to be evicted. So he gives the guy the eviction notice the guy's pissed, starts blaming the subscriber, saying all of this was his fault. And how was he supposed to know that this had been an issue before and you were going to get evicted? And on top of that, you broke his roof, bro. What did you want him to do when you plummeted 30 people into his living room? You gave him no choice but to make it his business and report you. People are just nuts, man. All right, so this is just a story that's like not long enough for its own video, but I've wanted to tell on the channel, so I hope you guys like it. A while ago, I was in the lunchroom back in middle school, and this was a little bit more organized than high school. It was just more out of control. It's a little bit harder to control people that are going to be adults in like one or two years. 
But back in middle school, there was one person who would get up on this little stage thing and give announcements, and it was usually like a teacher's pet, goody two-shoes type of person. If you like to follow the rules, good for you, but if you're annoying and like love snitching on people and act like Randall from Recess, you're not very swag. But whatever, the person would get up there and give the speech, and it just so happened to be this guy that had snitched on a ton of people, so he was not very popular with the school. And one day I walk in and my table was here, but it was connected to another table. And the kid who sat at the table connected to us was in trouble a lot of the time. And he says, I'm going to throw a tomato at that guy. And I was like, what do you mean you're going to throw a tomato at that guy? And in my mind, I'm envisioning that thing from medieval times where they would put that dude in like the, the wooden holder thing in the middle of town and people could throw things at him. And he opens his backpack, and sure enough, he has two tomatoes, and he's like, that guy snitched on me and got me suspended, so I'm gonna throw a tomato at him. And I'm like, all right, well, uh, yeah, go for it. And I know, I know, the right thing to do would have been to stop him, but I'll be honest, I wanted to see what would happen if he threw a tomato at him, and he had also snitched on me and gotten me in trouble, so I wasn't exactly like, oh no, don't throw the tomato at the guy, that would be very sad. No, throw it at him. Splatter it on his face. I, I don't really care. I think that would be hilarious. So my friends show up to lunch and I don't really tell them because they have big mouths. I don't want it to like be loudly announced and then everyone become aware of it. So I'm just sitting there watching and sure enough, about halfway through lunch, he gets up, walks over about 15 feet away from the guy as he's announcing what's coming up with the school. The dance is going to be on this day, on this da 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 da. And as he's in the middle of the speech, this tomato, which has been sitting in his backpack for a bit, so it's gotten a little bit soggy, it's not like a firm tomato, it's squishy, smacks into his forehead and splatters. It had gotten to that perfect consistency of just being held together by the skin, not much else, like there wasn't much substance. So as this tomato splats into his head, and it splats, it just goes everywhere. And he makes like a big ew noise into the microphone and immediately grabs it and says, whoever did that, you're going to be in big trouble. But as soon as the tomato hit him, a bunch of people have stood up and like started freaking out and laughing and pointing and, you know, trying to make a scene. So the guy who threw the tomato just comes back and sits down and starts acting the most normal I've ever seen him. Usually this kid was in trouble, he was loud, he was rambunctious. This man came back to the table, took the napkin in the shirt, started using a fork and knife, please and thank you. Ah, what is this chicken sandwich that I have here, medium rare? Like, you would have thought this guy was seriously a whole new person the way he put on the act as if he was some angel. And believe it or not, he ended up getting away with it, dude. He literally splatted this guy he had beef with, with a tomato, in the middle of the lunchroom as he was giving an announcement, and they couldn't figure out who did it. They went back and reviewed the security camera footage, and I don't know how it is that every phone is 1080p, but security cameras have this problem, but it was like 144p. So all it was was a kid in a hoodie. There's a lot of kids in a hoodie in a middle school, so good luck figuring it out. And because everyone had jumped up, it had just gotten even more confusing, so he straight up got away with it. And to make it even funnier, the guy who, like, did announcements had a little plexiglass screen put in, as if he was a politician giving a dangerous speech. Just to make sure if anyone else got wild ideas, they couldn't pelt him with the tomato. If you're so bad at making announcements that the school is like plotting to hit you with tomatoes, you might just want to give it up. Is it really that worth it? I is it? Wow, you announced that on the 15th of this month we'll be having a dance, and all you got for it was being hit in the face with a tomato. Doesn't seem like an even trade-off. And if you're going to get a privilege like that, at least do it by being really nice and cool and not snitching on people until the principal just finds you useful enough that they have to give you something you want. If you're selling out enough of your classmates that you're able to blackmail the teachers into giving you a position, you're snitching on your classmates way too much, let's be honest. So this one is just like a harmless prank that ended up going wrong, but it, it's still pretty funny. So the person who sent this in to me has gotten a little bit older, but when they were in high school, it was right around the time that every class got projectors, and it was a pretty big deal. And they had this teacher that they weren't too fond of because they took joy in, like, embarrassing kids that didn't too know too much about what was going on, excuse me. 
But like if you got an answer wrong, they would relish in being able to make you look stupid in front of the class, which is the worst type of teacher. If you want people to enjoy your class, help them enjoy it. Don't embarrass them when they're wrong. It's just going to make them slowly hate your subject more and more. But whatever, I digress. He decided to steal this teacher's projector remote just to mess with them a little bit because he thought it was funny. And it is pretty funny. And under most circumstances, the teacher would probably just order a new remote and it would harmlessly pass because it's not that big of a deal. But of course, the second that this teacher realized that their remote was missing, they started freaking out. They demanded that every student empty their pockets in front of them so they could double check that nobody had taken it. And at this point, the person who took it didn't want to, like, take it forever. They were just going to take it for a class. But they had to hide it and get away with it because the teacher made it very clear that whoever had taken it was going to get expelled for trying to steal school property. So they get it through the pocket check, and they have to just take it with them. And that's not their plan. It is not their goal to go ahead and take this for the entirety of their life. They were going to give it back, but their teacher really put them in a hard place where this harmless prank got forced to turn into them stealing it. So they go home and they just get rid of the remote. They didn't know what to do with it. They panicked. Yes, they probably could have just gone in and slipped it in. That's probably what they should have done. Hindsight is 2020, but they were panicked. They didn't want to get in trouble, so they just get rid of the remote. So the next day, he goes into class and the teacher starts telling them that because of whatever in-thoughtful, inhumane student stole the remote, they were going to be have to getting a, uh, have to be getting. I don't know what happened there. My words got flipped, turned upside down like a Fresh Prince of Bel-Air intro song. They were going to have to get a new projector, and they didn't really get it because they thought the same thing I did, which is you can't just buy a remote. I'm sure the projector company absolutely loves that. Oh, you lost the tiny little projector moat? Yep, you just gotta give us the entirety of whatever a projector costs. I don't even know what they cost now, but back then they weren't cheap. It was relatively new technology. And the school started a school-wide investigation to try to find out who had taken it. And he didn't tell anyone he was going to take it because he just didn't feel like it was a good idea to get that spreading around, which was probably for the best because they even ended up putting out a reward for whoever could give them information. But sure enough, one day he comes into class and they had a new projector. So the principal had gone out and like bought a brand new projector for this teacher. Makes you wonder what kind of dirt the principal must have had or had from the teacher. I'm just saying, I feel like at my school, we literally had to ask our parents for money because they didn't have money for paper for the printers. My school didn't have money for paper, guys. Paper, that's kind of something you need to do the school. Either way, it was just a weird situation where the teacher ended up getting their new projector, but for the rest of the year said that if they found out anything about who had done it, they would immediately be reporting them to the principal and they would be being prosecuted to the full extent of the law. So the person just kept it close to their vest and didn't tell anyone until they emailed it to me, which is hilarious because they're like 33 now. So, to whoever this was, power to you. Congratulations on keeping your secret. I don't think they're gonna find you. Could you imagine if this is how it all goes down? Like, he gets a letter in the mail from the school district saying that they heard this story and they know who he is. And if he doesn't cough up the money for what the projector cost, plus interest, he's going to be arrested. And because of the interest, it's like $800,000 now, you know? He owes over a million dollars. It, it, with the interest, it's like $1.8 million. The projector was 800000 and it was originally purchased because it was such new technology. We all know school districts don't have that kind of money. You can't fool us. All right, guys, we're like halfway through the video, and if you've been enjoying it so far, you should go down there and press the like button. And if you don't press the like button, then no joke, no scam, I will be forced to make my very large pet alligator eat you. Yeah, that's right. I uh, found him in Florida. He was just kind of walking around the street, super hungry. So press the like button and let's get back to the video. So sticking with the themes of apartments from earlier, this guy moved into this apartment complex and happened to be the youngest person who lived there by at least like 30 years. It was just a much older complex, which was fine. They weren't giving him any issue, but they had a lot of time on their hands to worry about things. 
When you're retired and you're not going to work and coming home exhausted, certain things mean more to you. And they took their, like, front flower displays on their porches very seriously. All the old ladies would, like, walk around and chat with each other on their porches. And they were always changing it up. They had to have a consistent theme, you know? They had, like, the Halloween set up, the Thanksgiving set up. The two ladies who lived closest to him, though, really did not like each other because of this display thing that they would do. One lady felt like the other lady was copying her. And because of that, was insanely mean to her. Would, like, constantly insult her whenever they were within earshot or eyeshot of each other. Going above and beyond to make sure that everybody knew that she was a copycat and sucked. Anyways, Christmas was coming up and he comes home one day and sees that they both have pretty similar displays. Which is not a bad thing. It's Christmas. There's really only so much you're going to be able to do. They both had a Christmas tree. They both had a little nativity scene. I don't know. Like, there's, there's only so much stereotypical Christmas decorations that you can put out. I'm sure if you went through the whole apartment complex, most people would have had some things in common. But whatever. He knows it's going to be some drama, so he just goes inside, sits on the couch, and starts playing video games, hoping that they don't make him intervene for some reason. Usually it just got too loud and argumentative that it was going to interrupt the entire complex so he would go out and try to calm it down, but he's just trying to play video games and he hears it. You bad female dog, you copied my entire scene, what's wrong with you, you're always copying me. I didn't copy you, you copied me, you always copy me and then tell everyone that I copied you. See, they're both just accusing each other of some crazy things, there's levels to this, it's old lady beef, you know? So they're arguing, and he's like, I don't want to get involved. I'm just going to let them argue it out. They can figure it out. They're, they're big girls. They're 65. They can handle it. So he goes back to playing video games, but the argument just keeps getting more and more intense. And then it stops, and it just kind of sounds like they're both uh, making animal noises at each other. Kind of like, rah, rah, rah. So he goes and looks out the window, and on the porch across from him... These two old ladies are, like, slapping each other, trying to fight. It doesn't really look like a fight, because they're both old, neither one of them is throwing punches, but if they could have thrown punches, they would have thrown punches, and they're very angrily slapping each other. And so at that point, he's like, all right, I gotta intervene. What am I supposed to do? I can't let these old ladies literally come out and have a Hunger Game fight over some stupid displays. So he goes out there and breaks them up, and they both start trying to blame the fight on the other ones, saying that, like, the other person copied them. And the subscriber had just had enough of this, so he tells both of them that he doesn't really care who started it, he doesn't really care who copied who, but fighting over the decorations you have on your porch is insanely stupid. And then they start uniting on him, bro. They're like, well, it's not stupid to us. How dare you think it's stupid? Why are you trying to talk down to us? I don't know, maybe because you just made him come out and break up a fight because you guys can't get along for the 15 minutes it takes to walk past each other every day multiple times. I don't know how often they're seeing each other, okay? It's like retirement village. Who knows how often they have to interact, but I feel like you don't have to slap and fight each other over some decorations. Especially because he was like, it was not a carbon copy. He, he would have told me if one of them had just carbon copied the other. That wasn't what happened. They just happened to have some things in common because guess what? There's certain things that everyone just associates with the holiday. Imagine you're decorating for Halloween and you look across the street and your neighbor has a skeleton. You go over there, you're like, oh, trying to encroach on my turf, huh? Skeletons are my thing. And he's like, dude, uh, skeletons are just a Halloween thing. Yeah, likely story. Nobody was using uh, uh, skeletons to decorate for Halloween until I started doing it. Everyone in this neighborhood just wants to be just like me. Goodness gracious, bro. Um, sometimes you just gotta take stuff too seriously. When you have nothing else going on, I feel like it's just a human desire to constantly have something to be, like, worried about for some reason. These people made it to retirement. Just go enjoy it. It's not like there's a ton of time left. I'm sorry, it's the reality. Why are you spending your time worrying about what your neighbor used to decorate their porch? Who really cares? None of this matters. Literally none of this matters. Especially to the point of throwing hands over it. You're lucky nobody got hurt. Two old ladies fighting, one of you falls down, breaks your hip. That's a fat lawsuit. 
So this next one is pure stupidity. I really would not recommend doing this. So this person works as a cashier at a gas station and they're usually pretty paranoid, especially the last year or so. Things have just gotten crazier. They haven't been robbed. They don't want to be robbed. That's a very normal human reaction, I would say. One day though, he's working and this guy comes in and immediately goes to like the back of the store and pulls something out of his jacket. And he just gets a very bad feeling. He doesn't know what it is, but he just, like, the way he's acting, the way he's looking at him gets a weird vibe. And the guy walks up, and he's got a paper bag, and he has his hand in the bag, and he looks at him, and he says, Give me the money. And immediately, this kid is just shaking, like, Oh, crap, here it is. I knew this was gonna happen eventually. And he says, Okay, yeah, sure, I'll give it to you. Just please don't hurt me. Like, I'll give you whatever you want. And the guy looks at him weird and says, dude, why are you so scared? And he's like, well, you're robbing me. Like, I'll give you whatever you want. Just please don't hurt me. And the guy pulls his hand out of the paper bag and is gripping onto a banana and says, no, man, it was just a prank. I'm messing with you. I'm not actually robbing you. And the person who sent this in to me is, of course, pissed and is like, dude, get out of the store. What's wrong with you? That's not funny. And the guy with the banana in his hand is like, why are you so upset about it? I don't understand. It's just a harmless prank. And maybe I'm stupid. I don't understand how this is a harmless prank. I don't even understand how this is funny. You're telling me that your entire idea of a prank is to go up to some person getting paid minimum wage who's in a situation where they are already thinking that being robbed is a possibility. You know, unfortunately, I feel like if you work at a gas station, you just know that it could happen. You're gonna walk in and make them think that you're going to rob them and then when they get scared, act confused about it and be like, no, it's a banana. I just don't think it's very funny. I, I don't get it at all. And I think a good prank is great. This reminds me of 2015 YouTube when they would just go up to people. Oh, I'm gonna go up and take their wallet as a social experiment and then be shocked when people would beat the crap out of them. Yeah, that's what happens when you take people's wallets. So they're arguing back and forth and he keeps telling the guy like, get out, get out of here, dude. You can't stay here. Like, I don't care where you go, but you can't stay here. And they're arguing back and forth and another customer that was in the store comes up and starts telling the guy to get out and it's not funny and he's lucky he didn't get hurt. And that's the other thing this guy's not thinking about, bro. Like, sure, it's really messed up to scare some poor minimum wage worker. But in 2022, you walk up to some guy with your hand in a bag and say, give me the money. There's not a 100% chance that you're leaving the store either. It's just such a stupid prank. There are so many things that could go wrong. And even if it quote unquote goes right, it's just not funny. How did you expect them to react? Aw oh, man, that was really awesome. You got me. I thought my life was in danger. And it was not. What a great prank. You sure are a cool dude. Maybe we could hang out sometime. I'm assuming this guy doesn't get invited to parties a lot, and if you're watching this, this is why. Because every time you go to the party, you start pretending to rob everyone and then act surprised when you get beat up for it. I don't know, bro. For anyone out there in a job like this, I don't know if people are this stupid often. I've never worked as a cashier. I just worked at a grocery store for a bit. But goodness gracious, this would have my anxiety on 11. If anything, I would be more paranoid after I got pranked about it. Because if someone is dumb enough to joke about it, then someone's definitely stupid enough to do it. Wherever banana prank guy is, you're a moron. Uh, don't recommend. Leave the poor minimum wage workers alone. This one is just some next level smart laziness while also kind of being funny because the person he got one over on was bragging about how impossible it would be to cheat in their class. This guy goes to school and like, the first day he's getting the names called off and the teacher stops on his name and asks him condescendingly if he has an older brother by this name. And he says yes and the teacher is like, oh, yes, your brother was a good writer but his behavior was, eh. Like just straight up first day of school, rude off rip. And that same first day, she proceeds to tell everyone in this class that she grades essays insanely hard and they should be afraid of having to write in her class because she was notorious for being ridiculously hard on writing. She's made students cry, she's made students want to drop out of school, and she's saying all this with a smile. I don't know, I feel like if I was a teacher and the uh, feedback I got at the end of the year on my class was, 
You made me cry and I want to never go to school again because of you. I wouldn't think that was a flex. I'd be a little bit embarrassed. But she was wearing it like a badge of honor. And she says there's literally no way to plagiarize. You will get caught. She remembers everything she's ever read and graded. And he goes home and he starts talking to his brother about this teacher. And his brother's like, oh yeah, she was not very fun to try to goof off in. Like her classroom's really hard. But every essay I wrote, I would get an A on. Do you want him? And he looks at his brother and says, well, how would I even use your essays? Like, what, how would that work? And this teacher had been at the school for a while and she used the same essay questions every year. And then he asks his brother, well, what about her being super hard to like convince that it's not your writing? And he laughs and says, dude, trust me. She says that and everyone lets her believe it, but she could not tell if something was plagiarized to save her life. And I want to make a disclaimer. I'm not saying he should have plagiarized. Plagiarism is wrong, okay? J just write the essay. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That being said, I understand where the guy is coming from. So he takes his brother's essay, and on the first essay of the year, it's the same prompt, so he rewrites it, turns it in, and is insanely nervous. He's expecting any minute now she's going to be reading it and look up and be like, You copied your brother to the brig with you. The school has a brig now. That's how long she's been there. She still has it operational. A brig is the jail on a ship, right? I, I just want to make sure that I'm thinking of the right thing. Anyways, he turns it in. She's reading it. And she says, can you stay after class? And he's insanely nervous, but he stays after. And she says, close the door. And then starts gushing about how it was such great writing. And she's very excited to see what he writes for the rest of the year because it was fantastic. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I spent a bunch of time on it, worked super hard, really loved the reading material. And she says thank you, and he leaves. And he's feeling like the man, bro. Imagine someone telling you, there is literally no way you will be able to do this, and then you do it. And you do it so well that they compliment you for it. Wow, you did that so great. Thank you so much. You'd be laughing too. So he goes home and he tells his brother and his brother's like, listen, just keep turning them in and if she ever catches on, then oh well, but just see how long it lasts. And you would think at some point she would have become aware. At some point she would have gone back and double checked. But no, this guy proceeded to spend the rest of the school year turning in his brother's old essays and getting A's on them every single time. Literally the easiest year of his life, man. Could you imagine, like, in English for a year, every time an essay gets assigned, you just go, meh, go to the pile, start going through it, pull one out. It's your brother as you turn it in. The teacher thinks she's the hardest grader on the planet, so nothing would get past her. Meanwhile, you're just racking in the 4.0 G GPA, all because your brother was a good writer. And it's not like this guy didn't know how to write. It was just more of a funny thing because she was so sure that she would grade everything so hard and she remembered everything she had ever graded. Apparently not. And his brother wasn't some insanely long time ago. It's not like his brother was there in the 70s and it's the year 2022. She had taught his brother like three years before. So the uh, iron trap of a memory that never forgets. Apparently three years is the limit on that. Meaning that some dude out there could theoretically be turning in, like, his dad's papers and she would definitely not remember it. Or maybe it's only recently. Maybe she used to have the great memory, but she's getting older. It's like a superhero that just gradually loses their super strength. Basically, their teacher and another teacher at the school were competing to get promoted. Uh, one of them got the job and then proceeded to punch the one that lost in the face just because it had gotten that competitive. I thought it was pretty nuts. It's not every day you see a principal going back and punching a teacher, so uh, I knew it would make a pretty good story time. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so this story actually has quite a little bit of build up to the point where the principal punches the teacher in the face. Thankfully, it wasn't like he just snapped one day and just started hitting teachers. Not that it makes it any better. He still did punch a teacher. But basically, there were two teachers, both of them taught in the same grade and both of them were pretty competitive. They were the two teachers that were always like trying way too hard on field day. And it just so happened that the principal that was in charge of the school the year before they ended up getting into this fight was retired. Retiring. And as part of her retirement, she wanted to pick someone to replace her. And the two teachers that were uh, like very competitive, school spirity type of people were the top two in the running. And before all this went down, they were pretty good friends. Like they didn't hate each other, they were just competitive more than anything. 
And because they were both the competitive teachers, like, they would do stuff with their classes together and whatnot, like, go outside and have a race, but their classes would be the ones racing type of thing. And, uh, it started to get really intense right when the principal kind of let them know that they were both in the running, because they both wanted to win, and they both were so competitive they were willing to play dirty. And immediately, rumors about both of the teachers started to swirl around the school, and they were just absolutely insane rumors, like, not even anything anyone could believe. Oh yeah, he had made a secret tunnel system under the school. Like, okay, cool rumor, I guess, but you're telling me dude really brought out the shovel and made a secret tunnel system under the school? If anything, that would make me want to make him principal even more. He knows how to use the secret tunnel system to get me out of class. And then a rumor would go back about the other teacher basically being like, yeah, he eats nothing but Vienna sausages with mayo on them. Just like weird rumors about each other. And the kids, which were a lot younger than the adults, believe believe it or not, could even tell that it was just these two guys spreading rumors about each other to try to hurt the other person's chance of becoming principal. It was as if, like, all the friendship they had had, that didn't matter. All that mattered now was getting the promotion. And so, it was really dramatic. They started pitting their class against each other, too, just beyond the rumors. Which is when you know you're going too far, alright? If you ever find yourself being, like, an elementary school teacher in a competition with another teacher, and you start treating your classroom more like a child army than a class classroom to like win whatever competition you're in that's kind of weird you know you're not joseph coney these aren't your children's soldiers you can't be telling them to like mess with the kids in his class on the playground and make them upset so that way when they go back to his class they'll mess behave but that's the type of stuff that they were both doing to the other one like, they would be like, okay, if he's in charge of taking you somewhere for a class, like a teacher escorting kids through the hallway, misbehave and make him look bad. Like, they were really trying to pit these classes against each other. So not only are they spreading rumors, but all the kids are getting a little bit exhausted of it because they're caught in the middle of this feud. And even other teachers would comment on it. Like, they would have to go to music class or PE with a different teacher. And the teacher would always say that, like, oh, is the competition between them interrupting your classes due? because it's getting pretty intense. They didn't want to make rumors with the kids, but everything we've said so far is just what they were able to see and hear in the classroom. Apparently, it was making its way into, like, the teacher's lounge, too. The person that sent this to me had a relative that worked in the front office, and they would hang out with them after school sometimes while their parents were coming to pick them up. And they were overhearing conversations from, like, a bunch of teachers saying that no matter which of them became principal, the way that they've handled this made them look both very unprofessional. Because... You know how, like, little kids, when they're running for class president or whatever, will put posters up in the hallway saying, oh, if you vote for me, I'll put soda in the water fountains, all that stuff. And it's obvious that just a lot of the stuff that they're saying they want to do can't happen because you're only, like, as powerful as the student government is. Well, they were doing something equally as cringy, but they were both full-grown adults and just acting like the principal had total power. Like, one of them had said that if he became principal, he would try to double their salaries, which just is not how it works. If you work for a public school, your salary isn't decided by your principal. And on top of that, if you decided to pay every teacher double, you probably would get fired pretty quick as principal because the state would come in and say, why does your school cost twice as much money to run as every other school in the state? And whenever they were both in the room in the teacher's lounge, apparently they would just argue with each other. They would never argue, argue in front of the kids, but they would literally get into arguments in the teacher's lounge that would escalate to the point where they were screaming at each other and other teachers would have to get in between them because they thought it was going to break into a fist fight. They were just taking this entire thing way too seriously. And as for why all of this was going on and like they didn't end up losing out on the job or somebody else getting promoted, well as I said, it was the principal's last year. She was an older lady. It wasn't like she was retiring the first year she could have retired. She had hung on for a while and she had gotten to that point where she was no longer longer like retirement age she was that like unfunctional old and that's no offense to anyone but when someone maybe doesn't really notice the details that well anymore they're a little forgetful well, because of that, she also had a little bit of a hard time moving around. Like, she had slowed down, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. She was still a principal. She was doing a fine job running the school. But she wasn't spending a lot of time in the teacher's lounge. She wasn't spending a lot of time talking to everyone anymore. And whenever she would be around, they would be on their best behavior because they realized she was in charge of the promotion. You know, making everybody's life have a bunch of problems when she wasn't around is sick. But if she was around, it was as if, dude, they were being the... the uh, 
template for the greatest teacher of all time. She walks into the class, and that, kids, is how you can use the power of English to defeat bad guys and never forget that you can be your own Iron Man with the power of reading. And she's like, wow, that's such a beautiful message. She leaves, okay, go over to his class and like uh, use silly string to make sure none of their homework is readable. They were just really trying to get the promotion. That's all that they cared about. And even some parents took notice. Like they had this uh, group of parents that would come in and volunteer through the week to help the teacher with things like hanging stuff up in the wall and whatnot. And they ended up coming into the office after school, a few of them, and mentioning that they thought they were taking this a little bit too seriously. I always hated when teachers would try to, like, get us involved in their drama when I was in school. Like, believe it or not, I don't care what you and your 37-year-old friend are arguing about. That seems like your problem. You're probably just upset that he didn't have funny enough minion memes or something on Facebook. Like, I, dude, please don't get anyone else involved. Especially the parents. Like, did you think the parents were going to be hyped about you being being the kid's principal, but they had asked parents to like spy on the other one, try to get dirt on each other. And so the office, when all these parents are reporting it, are like, yeah, it's definitely nuts. But for the rest of the year, they just kind of went back and forth. And finally, the end of the year comes. There was not really any insane events other than them just kind of doing everything I had described earlier. It wasn't like any of them went above and beyond and like put a fish in the air conditioning unit or the other or whatever. But the time comes and the uh, principal who's retiring ends up picking one of them and it didn't really matter which one she picked they both would have been crappy to the other one like they had just put way too much into this where they were not going to be cool with the results if it wasn't them so either way the school knew they were in for a year of a very complicated aggressive angry year just because they were going to be going back and forth but they uh on the last day of school announced the new principal introduce him and everyone's like yay whatever but the teacher that had lost during this assessment assembly thing where they're introducing the new principal is like pouting like a little kid arms folded looking down he's not like making noises or saying anything but he's definitely making it clear he's not happy and it was almost like he wanted people to ask him what was wrong so he had an excuse to talk about it like you know when someone is just trying to act like they don't want to be talked to but in a way where they definitely do huh <sighs> i'm so sad <sighs> I don't want anyone to ask me what I'm so sad for, okay guys? Just don't even, cause it's such a long story. Like that was kind of the vibe he's giving off as he's pouting, is he wanted somebody to be like, what's wrong? So he could talk about how I deserve the principal job. But whatever, the year ends and now the subscriber is no longer gonna be in their class, so he thinks it should be the end of all the issues. And on top of it, there's no more competition. Like yeah, whatever, they got competitive during the year, but one of you got the promotion. And now you have the entire summer to calm down to. Like, I could understand being frustrated, but after three months, you think you'd be able to go, okay, it's not gonna be that bad, whatever. It's a competition that happens. If you're gonna be competing with someone for a promotion, one of you is gonna get it, the other one is not. Like, that's just the reality of it. It's gonna be okay. Well, I guess neither one of these guys could really do it and uh, not get over it because the principal decided to be petty to the teacher and the teacher decided to repay the petty with a little bit of trash talk as well. Basically, the principal had taken the guy out of the classroom that he had had for like the last six years he taught at that school and moved him to the worst one, which was in the portable, which was not very swag. And uh, on the first day of school, they also had an assembly to talk about everything. And so he recognized his teacher from the year before, who was the one that got moved into the portable, the subscriber, asked him how his year was going, and he was like, not very good. The principal moved me into a portable. I hate it. The air conditioning's broken. And listen, Listen, yes, it's a very, very petty thing. Like, let's be honest, he already lost the competition. He already is not the principal. To move him out of the classroom that he's had for the last six years to a portable classroom with no air conditioning is just kind of like pooping on his yard. You know, like, okay, technically you're not doing anything wrong, but it's obvious to everyone around you were trying to be petty. Well, whatever, it gets quiet. Everyone sits down. The teacher that he had the last year goes over to his class and the principal comes out and is like all right guys who's having a great year and that's when the teacher pulls his petty move because he yells something out about i'm not having a great year because you're the principal 
And obviously a bunch of the kids start laughing because it's an elementary school. And if I heard like a teacher call out the principal, I would have laughed too. Are you kidding me? I feel like when you're in elementary school, for some reason, the principal is like a cartoon villain. I don't know why. I think it was codenamed Kids Next Door mainly, like all the cartoons just making the principal seem like a prison warden. But if anyone made a joke about the principal, I would have been like, that's a knee slapper. The principal, I don't know if he didn't know who said it or if he was just trying to add insult to injury and make him feel irrelevant goes like who said that and the teacher stands up and goes I did and at that point the principal knew who it was and it's something out of a Star Wars movie bro like Luke I am your father type of moment these former best friends divided by the promotion are now fighting but the principal decides to 720 no scope him back and says oh is that that sore loser and because the school is mostly full of immature people the entire auditorium like oh he said sore loser and at that point the other teachers who are in charge of their own classes start telling everybody like okay guys calm down don't do that we don't insult people like that because this is the principal and a teacher doing this as far as when you're like teaching kids how to behave and how to talk to other people it's probably not the best thing to have their principal be in like a roast match with a teacher on the first day of school I think it's funny I I think it's hilarious I wish I could have seen it that being said I'm not the principal like you if you are in charge of an elementary school you can't be having a roast battle with your staff in front of anyone you probably shouldn't be having a roast battle at all but you definitely shouldn't in front of the kids like it or not you're kind of a role model at that point like oh yeah I'm allowed to talk to my mom however I want my principal talks to teachers like that just not a good idea you know I don't want to be a principal but if you are gonna choose to be a principal which both of you competed for for this promotion then you gotta act like a principal you can't be acting like a donkey anyways the teachers are trying to tell the kids like okay guys calm down don't listen but that doesn't go over or work at all imagine that you're sitting in the auditorium your teacher and principal start fighting another teacher is like guys stop paying attention I would have looked at them and been like yeah I don't know if you know this but this is probably literally the most entertaining thing that's going to happen this year so I'm gonna be paying very close attention but when you're trying to teach me how to like conjugate verbs or whatever maybe I'll think about this to not want to watch paint dry instead of what doing whatever it is that we're gonna be learning but thank you for telling me not to pay attention I'm gonna look back at the fight now so they're trading insults back and forth and and the uh, class, the school, I guess is the better term, is still reacting like, oh, every time they're trading back and forth. But the teacher starts to get more heated and is like, I'm going to come up there and we can argue in front of everyone. And the principal says, come on up here. So he starts to walk up to the front of the auditorium and the stage thing and all the kids are cheering like it's a WWE wrestling match. You would have thought they just announced that John Cena and The Rock were coming to school to like throw metal chairs at each other. Everyone the way he's walking up there oh it's going down no way they're actually gonna do it I mean to be fair it would be pretty sick if like your teacher and your principal are about to just argue in front of everyone the teacher gets on stage and now they're both by the microphone and they just go back to throwing insults at each other but now it's escalating it went from like you're a loser to now they're insulting each other you know uh saying things about each other's family like that type of vibe it's just getting way too intense and it gets so intense that even the group of kids Kids, which you think you would be cheering this entire time goes quiet because they're just digging way too deep into each other like yeah the reason you have dad problems is because you're a loser maybe that's why your dad always told you you sucked and you shouldn't have made the baseball team and you're like ah I just did not need to know that about my teacher or my principal you know yeah remember that time when you crapped yourself at the Metallica concert it was because you have bad sphincter control. Like just going back and forth in front of the school telling stories that didn't need to be told. And now teachers are starting to walk up there and like yell at them that this isn't appropriate. And the teacher says something like about the principal's wife. At that point, there was a lot of people yelling. So the subscriber doesn't remember exactly what was said. But it's something along the lines of like, your wife's ugly, which is too far. You want to insult each other, that's fine. There's no reason to bring 
bring other people's family or like their spouse into it. That's just very unnecessary. But the principal reacts, and at this point, they're just both so in the wrong that I don't want anyone to think that I'm defending a ch the other. I'm just saying that like this is what happened. The principal hears the insult about his wife and decides to punch him in the face. Is that appropriate in front of a school? No. But at the same time, if someone's talking mad crap about your girlfriend, can I understand being mad and hitting them? Kind of. Like, it's just a tricky situation. Definitely not in a school and definitely not if you're a principal, though. That is 100% for certain. And he just leans back and punches this teacher in the face. And as soon as he hits the teacher, the crowd fires back up again. Like, all the awkwardness that had happened, they're like, Oh my gosh, he hit the teacher! And as soon as the principal realizes he's hit the teacher, he immediately, like, puts his hands up and is like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. A bunch of teachers rush on stage and push them apart. And the kids are just out of control now. People are standing up. People are running in circles being like, Oh my god, he hit the teacher! Did you see that? He took his fist. He hit his face. Ah, like, freaking out as if it's the only time they've ever seen someone get punched. And for a lot of them, it probably was the first time they saw someone get punched. You're in kindergarten and your principal just like knocked out one of the teachers but now that all the teachers have broken them up the teacher who got punched is trying to get out of their hands and go fight and like finally a bunch of the like office workers school resource officers security guard people get up there and they're holding the teachers apart or the teacher and the principal. And so then all the teachers that were helping separate them start going back to their class and, like, start taking kids back to class. And obviously it's insanely chaotic because all the kids are just hyped. They just watched their principal get in a fight, man. A teacher got punched. So as the teachers are taking them back to class, they're trying to calm everyone down. Guys! Guys! Quiet! Inside voices! And everyone's like, Oh my god, he got punched! Still, dude. It was like it was still happening. That's how excited everyone was but whatever they finally get all these students back to class the hallway very slowly empties the sound from in the hallway goes down but inside the classes everyone's still talking about it like dude if I was him I would have done a karate move dodged his punch and then done like a throat chop you know how is all of a sudden whenever you watch a fight everybody watching is some expert who would have definitely done something differently but everyone is talking about it and the teacher gets up in front of the class and is like all right guys we need to talk about what we just saw it's very important that we go over why that's not okay and as to explain to all these kids why it's inappropriate to just punch somebody in the face even if they call you a loser or make a joke about you and at the same time it's wrong to insult people because it could hurt their feelings which the subscriber who sent this to me was like yeah that's obvious but that's the problem with this situation is you have to explain really weird stuff like that to all these young kids when they just watch their principal get in a fight and punch somebody in the face. Someone has to sit them down and go, you can't do that, because yeah, while the subscriber's smart enough to know that that's not acceptable, some kid at the school was going to start using this to settle all the playground beef, and when he was asked why he's punching people in the face, just say, oh, well, the principal did it, so I thought it was cool. Like, you just can't really do that in front of a bunch of people. But whatever, the teacher gives them a little bit of a lecture, and uh, they go about the rest of the day as normal as possible. Everyone was still talking about it. But later that day, this subscriber gets home and he tells his parents all about it. And his parents are like, your principal did what? He got in a fight? Oh my goodness, this is insane. And uh, his mom decides to call the school to try to get to the bottom of what happened, get an official story. And at that point, the school must have been getting flooded with calls because... They realize they have an, uh, like a message on their answering machine, those old things. I, people still have them, but you know what I'm saying. They have a message on their answering machine, and they press play, and it's one of those, like, calls from the school that they do whenever there's gonna be a day off, whenever you miss school, like the semi-automated system, and the school district that this person's from was a little bit smaller, so someone would record a message, and they press play, and it's the principal's voice, and it comes over the answering machine, and it's like, uh, attention parents, I wanted to bring to your attention that earlier today I got in a fight with a teacher during a presentation. This was highly unacceptable, and I understand it was highly unacceptable. I'd like to apologize for my da-da-da-da-da. I should never have let my anger get the best of me. 
going on one of these apologies, but it's just hilarious. He did like the automated phone call system. Hey, I'm gonna need the automated phone call system. Why? What happened? Uh, I punched a teacher in the face and now I have to apologize because every kid in the school saw it. You did what? Yeah, yeah. But he apologized and somehow thought that that was gonna be the end of it. If anything, the apology just made it worse because now everyone was aware of it. And like by the end of school, the day after that, the calls for him to step down were getting louder and louder. Uh, I don't know what you expect the parents to do. If I found out that my kid's principal was just rolling around punching teachers in the face, I don't know how I'd feel about it either. You're supposed to be in my charge of my kid's education and you can't even not punch someone in the face? And that goes for the teachers too. Like clearly the teachers don't respect the principal if they're getting on stage. The entire thing's a disaster. And uh, the principal did step down. Since he stepped down, he was just able to go to like a different school in the district and be a teacher again. But overall, both of them ended up taking the L because the other guy's definitely not going to be principal after the stunt he pulled. And the guy who was principal is never going to get to be principal again after the stunt that he pulled. So everyone loses. That That is just the moral of the story. Don't get hyper competitive about things to the point where you're going to get in a fight. I don't really know what the moral is. I just thought this was crazy. Don't punch teeth. Teachers, I don't know. Take whatever moral you want to out of this one. And uh, today I've got a story time that takes place from back when I was in college. It's a pretty funny one about a teacher who just kind of had it out for me. Still not really sure why, to be honest. I was just trying to do my thing, but I thought it would be a story time y'all would enjoy. Before we get into it, be sure to press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam whatsoever. Your teacher will try to fail you. And without further ado, let's hop into it. All right, so this is from the uh, one year that I was in college. It was my English class, and we had an assignment about what we wanted to do in the future. We had about two weeks to make the assignment and type it out, and we were supposed to take it seriously because, you know, now that we were at college, it's time to think about the future, which is true, I get it. But I have a really, really bad track record of, like, forgetting stuff and then doing it the day before it's due. So we had two weeks, and I totally forgot about it until the night before it was due. And I remembered, and I was like, crap, I don't really know how I'm gonna write this in the next three hours if I'm, like, gonna actually do something that I want to do in the future, you know? So I decided I would just kind of write a paper about a joke career path and so I was talking about how I had this business idea after watching Cars, the Pixar movie, that I was going to open a car wash that made cars dirtier. It makes no sense. I don't even know what I was thinking. I might not have been in the right state of mind. But y'all picking up what I'm putting down, I just needed to get it done. So whatever, I write this stupid page and a half like thing about how I'm going to open this car wash and it's my plan and blah blah blah. It makes no sense, but I turn it in because I figure, like, even if I get a 62%, a it's better than a zero, you know? Like, I might be able to pull it out GPA-wise by the end of the semester. But I get my grade back, and I got an 82%. And I thought it was hilarious. Like, when I saw it, I was literally thinking to myself, there's no way I got a B on that. I was elated, and an 82 is not a high grade. I don't want you guys to get confused. Like, I don't think an 82 is a 100%, but when I turned it in, I was expecting a high F, low D. Like, it was, it was garbage. So I was pretty hyped considering how dumb it was. And the next day that I had that class, I'm sitting there, and at the end of class, I go to get up, and the teacher's like, hey, can I talk to you? And I assumed that it was not related because it had been a little bit since the assignment. There hadn't really been any talk of it during the class. So I just thought, I, I don't know, maybe it was like an enrollment issue, something in a conflicting class schedule. I don't know. I didn't really think too much about it. So I stay after and I walk up to the desk and I'm like, hey, what's up? And she's like, uh, do you think my class is a joke? And I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> I'm playing dumb. I kind of knew what she was talking about, but at the same time, it's not like I wrote the essay to be offensive. I didn't think the class was a joke. She was more than, like, capable of giving me an F. I would have understood. It's not like I, I tr was treating the class like a joke. I was just being dumb. But I'm playing dumb, so I ask, what do you mean? Like, why do you think I'm treating your class like a joke? And she's like, well, your essay, it was just kind of like you were treating this assignment like a joke. And yeah, I was treating the assignment like a joke, but I had gotten a B, so I was confused. Like, if she would have failed me, I would have understood this conversation a lot more, but I was just not really understanding the messaging of giving me a B and then getting mad. 
Like, you should have just failed me, and then I would have understood that it was a no-go. And so when I say, well, I got a B, I'm confused, she's like, well, because it was the first assignment of the year, it was more about the formatting, grammatical errors. You didn't have any of those, but most of other people in the class, like, took it seriously and talked about what they want to be in the future, and it just felt like you were treating the assignment like a joke. And I didn't really have a defense for myself, so I was like, yeah, well, I was just trying to have fun with it, you know, I, I don't really know what I want to do with the rest of my life. And she cuts me off in the middle of my explanation and is like, well, I don't think you respect this class because this isn't a place to be having fun with your assignments. If I give you an assignment and I ask you to think deeply about the prompt, then I expect you to think deeply, and next time it doesn't matter about the formatting. If you treat an assignment poorly, then I will grade you harshly. And if you ever make a joke of my assignments again, you will fail. And so I thought she was kidding, you know, like maybe this was all an elaborate ruse to, I, I don't know, show me that she had a good sense of humor. So I smile because it was just so angry. Like I got a speech that a Disney villain gives when they think they have the hero beaten. So I smile and she's like, wipe that smile off your face. I'm serious. This class is not a joke. This is college. It's not time to mess around anymore. And I was like, all right, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you upset. Like I was just trying to get the assignment done. I didn't really mean to offend you because I genuinely didn't. Like, of course, in my mind, I wanted to say this is stupid. But when your teacher is yelling that they're going to fail you, you're kind of like, OK, I'm so sorry. And listen, I understood it was a serious assignment, but there was no outline about like, do not turn in a joke because I will be mad. Th there was there was nothing like that. It was kind of obvious, though, I will say that. So whatever. After that, I was just trying to be the most boring writer as like the most boring writer I could possibly imagine. Because I was not trying to have any issues and all of the assignments just kept being insanely boring. So I just wrote them as boringly as I could. But I did my job, you know, I had no more fun with the assignments, but every time I would turn in my assignment, dude, she would take forever to grade it and like ask me questions about what I had written to make sure that I knew what I was talking about. Like she was, she was on me. She was looking for a reason to fail me. I didn't give her a reason, but one day some poor soul had made the mistake of trying to have fun with an assignment. And this was more into the year where like, you know, we all kind of got the vibe that there was no fun allowed. But he turned in an assignment trying to have fun, and she puts his essay up on the screen in front of everybody and just starts roasting him, saying that, you know, she can't believe that he dared try to have any fun, and this was a serious writing class, and she didn't understand why we were incapable of taking things seriously. And the class is just silent. We're not reacting one way or the other because we all feel bad that this kid's getting yelled at, but none of us are going to be the person to be like, oh, this is a little much. But she basically finishes her speech by saying that because he had done this before, he could just not come anymore because she was going to fail him. So yeah, she was serious about that. Apparently, if you have too much fun in this particular English class, you just fail. I, I don't know. I was very happy when that class ended, and uh, I, I don't miss having a teacher like that. I don't miss having teachers in general. I just thought that was crazy, all because I tried to have fun with an essay. I've got more stories that people have sent in about crazy teachers, though, so stick around. All right, so this one was sent in to me about a guy who had a teacher that was way too old to still be teaching. And, like, that's not a disrespectful thing. The guy had had a very, very long career as a teacher, had done a lot of good. But it just gets to be a point where, like, A, you should go enjoy your retirement, you know, and B, things change and maybe... At a certain point, it's not bad to be like, ah, I can't really keep up and do the same stuff I used to do. But he just refused to f retire and the school couldn't really do anything to force him out because he wasn't like breaking rules or anything. He just refused to retire. And so he gets assigned to this class for his government class. And before the school year even starts, there's a call from the principal at his house. And they're like, just so everyone's aware ahead of time, we know that this teacher is very unorthodox. We know that he's not covering a lot of the material he's supposed to cover. It's the last year on his contract. We won't be renewing it. But ahead of time, we just want you to know that we know. Which is a weird thing I've never heard of a school doing, but it was like they were almost preemptively trying to avoid a lot of the complaints that they had gotten. But the person who sent this in to me after that phone call is like, well, there's no way it's that bad. Like, it can't be that bad. If the guy can't even teach anything, there's no way he would still be a teacher. You know, his family would have made him retire or something. 
But on the first day, he walks in, and the teacher is yelling. But it's not because he's mad, it's just because he had, like, started to kind of not have the hearing he used to have. Which is fine, like, you know, it's just the reality of, of getting older, like, it is what it is. But the one thing that made it frustrating is he refused to admit that his hearing was starting to be affected. He refused to do anything about it. And he was just convinced that everyone around him was messing with him by, like, not speaking up on purpose to make him think he was losing his hearing. So he was just always yelling because if he talked at a normal, like, a volume, then he couldn't hear himself. And he would also get insanely mad with everybody because he would be like, Why are you whispering, trying to convince me that I'm losing my hearing? And would just get so mad and start screaming at them. So everybody else in the class had to basically yell at him all the time because otherwise he would get mad at you for not talking loud enough. So that's just his impression on the first day. Like, all right, he's going to yell all the time. We have to yell all the time. He never wants to admit that anything's changed with him. We're just all somehow evil children trying to convince him that he can't hear. And like I said, it wouldn't be an issue. You know, if you were like, hey, obviously, guys, I'm a little older. You know, I, I just need you guys to speak up a little bit. And if I speak loudly, I'm sorry. It's just a byproduct of what's going on. But he was just pretending like everyone else was insane. And on top of all that, it was like he forgot what topic he was supposed to be teaching. For example, he would just start the class and start a math lesson. It's not a math class, you know? And then in the middle of this math, he would just go on a tangent about how he used to raise chickens. And then he would talk about food for a while and how you're supposed to eat three meals a day. And then he would go back to math. And it was a government class. So it's just all over the place. No one's actually learning anything, which I don't know if is the worst at the time. At the time, you're like, wow, this class is so easy. But in retrospect, you're like, wow, I spent an entire year basically babysitting someone's grandpa. One week, he started going off about how he had this, like, super high-tech documentary series that they were going to love. It was a few years old, so some stuff was out of date, but they were gonna love it. And they walk into class when they're supposed to start watching this, and they're confused. Because do you remember those old media carts that had, like, the VHS player? One of those is in there. And they didn't even think that those things still existed. Like, I assumed that all of those were chilling in the bottom of a landfill somewhere. But no, he's got it ready to go, and uh, it's a documentary series from like 1979 about American history, which, you know, if you do some math, that's a little bit ago. A lot of history has happened in between 1979 and now that they probably need to talk about. And I feel like the way we process and teach information has probably changed a bit too. And what made this super high-tech documentary thing even better is, like, he managed to somehow have some tech problems with a VHS machine, you know? And any time technology didn't work, he would get so angry and be like, this is why we should just avoid technology. In this guy's world, going full Amish was the best thing to do now that there was technology in schools. And so he would just sit there and, like, swear at his projector or, or the VHS player and be like, technology's stupid, blah, 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 it's so dumb, but would never take any time to like, I don't know, unplug it, replug it back in. Like, it, actually troubleshooting was too hard. He would just use very creative language to get angry at, at the equipment, which, hey man, I'm not trying to police anyone's language. I don't care what you say. It's just funny if you're gonna be getting mad at a computer for not turning on when you're not pressing the power button. And the real icing on the cake, just for how confusing of a school year it was, was inevitably, when the year was coming to an end, they got their final assignment. And it was a government class, so you'd think it would be like, you know, a, a government assignment, figure out what the Constitution's about. No, it was to build a birdhouse. I'm not really sure at all how that ties to learning anything about the government, but he was very adamant that this was an important assignment and they would learn a lot by building a birdhouse. But the person who sent this to me did not feel like building a birdhouse, didn't know how to build a birdhouse, didn't know where to go to start building a birdhouse. Not that it's insanely complicated, they just didn't want to do it. So they went to the store and like bought one of those kits that's built but rough for people to paint, turned it in, and the teacher was like, oh my gosh, this is such a great birdhouse, and gave them an A+. 
and they felt bad. But on the other hand, they're like, why were you assigning us to build birdhouses if you can't even tell when one is bought from a store or not? And he was so lazy about it that it wasn't even hidden that it was from a store. The teacher put it up in front of the class one day to show them the great quality birdhouse he had built. And there was like straight up still the price tag on the bottom of it from the store. So I don't know, man. The, the entire situation was just crazy. The year was very entertaining, but it was very unfortunate when they got to like the next level of that subject and the teacher was like, why do you guys know nothing? Oh yeah, because our uh, government teacher just forgot that he was a government teacher pretty often. All right, so this person who sent this in to me was in college and they were in this class where the teacher was trying to like embrace the technological curve, which I'm gonna give them credit for because a lot of people fight it and they had to put all of their assignments in a Google Drive. And so one weekend this assignment was due and the teacher had made the mistake of giving everybody the ability to access and delete files. So when the due date was approaching right before everyone's had to be in the Google Drive, somebody went through and just deleted all of the essays. They had made a burner email, added it to the class. The teacher had just given everyone admin, so they had the ability to just delete all the files. And you would think after that the teacher would like take away admin from everybody or at least take it away from the person who deleted the account. But they don't. They just say, all right, guys, I'm going to give you another week. But whoever did that wasn't nice. And so the deadline comes around again. And so they delete the file again. And the teacher doesn't want to take away admin from everybody. They just spend the next like class period in class lecturing them about how whoever is deleting these assignments isn't sticking up to the academic code. Yeah, obviously they're already willing to be deleting assignments. I don't think that you giving them a speech about how it's not nice is going to change that. But they get another week extension. So now this particular essay is two weeks delayed and they don't delete it. It was like that two weeks of delays was enough for them to just get the assignment done. But for major assignments for the rest of that year, that burner email would just go in and delete stuff and get them huge like delays and have way more time to work on stuff. And it was like the teacher didn't want to remove that burner email for whatever reason, which would have probably solved the problem. I don't think the person's going to be like brave enough to delete everyone's files from the account that has their name on it. And if anything, why would you not get rid of the account? They kept being like, I don't want to let that person win. And it's like the only way you're going to let them win is if you just keep let them doing it. So whatever, he would just keep giving weak extensions to the class because he wasn't going to like fail everybody because of it. But by the time the end of the semester's coming around, all of the delays had started to stack up. And there was five assignments that they were supposed to get to for that particular topic that year that they couldn't. And the teacher, the professor, didn't want to like extend the class a bunch of more time. And on top of that, let's say you extend the class like a month into summer. I don't know if they get paid for it for going longer. What if the person starts deleting files? So he just said, all right, I'm going to give everybody an A on this stuff. But whoever did that, like that wasn't very cool. And I don't like that. Which, duh, you don't like it. Your job as a college professor kind of gets uh, thrown out the window if people can just delete files and not have you teach half the class. But somewhere out there is a dude who was in this class who just added a burner email at the start of the year and probably thought, no way this will ever come in handy. And now he just deleted files all the way to an A in class. And like, I, I just can't believe they didn't solve it. I don't really care about wanting the delay. Like I could imagine being in a situation where you want an extra week for an assignment or whatnot. I feel like at a certain point, if you just keep letting the person do it over and over again, deleting all the files of all the class and giving them delays and just saying, hey, don't do that. And you just refuse to remove the email. You're kind of like setting yourself up for it. Obviously the person shouldn't be deleting all of the assignments. But dude, take away the ability to delete the file. It's really not that complicated. You're not letting them win. But yeah, somewhere out there, someone just deleted files to an A. So the last story I've got today actually comes from my dad way back in the day. He recently told me this story. He had a teacher when he was like in eighth grade for this marketing class they had him do. And she just did not like my dad. She didn't really like anyone. It was like just being there was the most annoying thing that had ever happened ever. Whether you were a teacher, whether you were a student, this lady just had a way of being like, you are the most annoying person. But she particularly did not like my dad. 
And she didn't like my dad because he was always trying to have too much fun with assignments. And on this particular day, they had been told that they had to, like, make a breakfast cereal and promote a commercial. So him and his best friend had, like, taken Raisin Bran and rebranded it or something, something dumb. And he's kind of sitting there and he takes a bite and he shoots up excitedly to be like, Mmm, this is so good, like overacting the commercial. But when he shoots up, all of the Raisin Bran, there's no milk in it, kind of goes flying everywhere because that's how inertia works. But my dad just, I don't know, probably not thinking anything of it, just doesn't realize that the cereal's gonna fly everywhere, so it starts flinging everywhere. And now that it's flying everywhere, he decides that he's just gonna take the box and fling it everywhere, which was dumb. He says he doesn't really know why he thought that was a good idea, but it was just what he did in the moment. And the teacher starts running over, yelling about how he's making a mess, like grabbing the box, but there was already some cereal flying around by the time she ran over and grabbed the box. And a lot of it ended up landing in her hair. And she just, like, had that 80s hair, you know, where it's all hair sprayed to the point where it's basically, like, I don't know, like a rat trap, like a glue rat trap. Probably used enough aerosol cans to single-handedly cause global warming. Well, all the, like, cereal lands in her hair and just sticks there, and she doesn't notice. And she's yelling at him for making a mess, and he's like, okay, and starts picking up everything off the floor, and her hair is covered in cereal, and he doesn't say anything, and he's surprised because no other students in class say anything. And usually, in this situation, there's one goody two-shoe that's like, uh, ma'am, you know, there's cereal in her hair. So the rest of the class, they just let her teach with all this cereal in her hair, and apparently she wasn't very nice to other teachers either because the class ends and all the teachers go stand in the hall and all the teachers see all this cereal in her hair but they don't say anything and none of the students walking by say anything people would laugh but the teacher just assumed that they were like being mean so she would argue with them and be like what are you laughing at so they weren't gonna tell her oh you have cereal in your hair so no one says anything and over the course of the day, like, it slowly falls out little by little. But sure enough, even by the end of the day, like, there's still some cereal there. And everyone was just letting her walk around with this raisin bran drip because she was the mean lady and everyone was just like, nah, we're gonna let you have the cereal in your hair. You know you're a mean teacher when even the teachers don't have your back. I feel like usually they're a united front, you know? If they're letting cereal stay in your hair, then you gotta be angry at the PTA meeting. Either way, guys, I think that's gonna do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I'd really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. And of course, subscribe if you're new and turn on those notifications. If you like listening to these, but you want to listen to like the audio like a podcast, I do post a podcast version over on Spotify. Link down below. Feel free to check it out. But uh, yeah, on that note, guys, don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. And hopefully I'll see you guys all next time. I'm out. Peace.